15, 2021 public hearing for the City of Tampa's Architectural Review Commission. Welcome everyone. I'm Susan Claus Smith. I'll be the chair, the acting chair for the committee, the commission tonight. Um, if you are here to present a project, you will have limited time to make your presentation, so we suggest being thorough but concise. When coming to the microphone, you will need to identify yourself and your relationship to the project. The commissioners will not ask any questions during your presentation. Your project should be presented in the following order. Site plan, elevations, architectural details, wall sections. The staff will then present their staff report upon the completion of your presentation. And then we will ask for a public comment. And then, um, the commissioners will be asking questions in the same order as your presentation. When you do come to the podium, uh, please state and spell your name clearly if you are here to speak for or against a project. Your time will be limited to three minutes, so take some time now to summarize your comments because three minutes goes by very quickly. Following public comment, the applicant will have five minutes for rebuttal and then the public hearing will, will be closed. The only comments which will be allowed after the public hearing is closed will be in response to any questions from the commissioners. The commissioners will then discuss the case and will make their decision based on the city ordinance, chapter 27 of the city zoning code, the design guidelines, the secretary of interior standards, historic preservation development review or HPDRC comments, and the testimony given at the public hearing. The ARC can only act on items that are within our specific jurisdictional responsibility owner or agents and or agents are independently responsible to obtain any appropriate permits and or approvals. Now, if you haven't already done so, please do silence your cell phones. And then um, I will ask my fellow commissioners to introduce themselves and I will start out on my left. Shauna Boyd, interior designer. Good evening, Stephen Sutton, architect. I hold the architectural historian chair. Brent Taylor, I'm a building contractor. Ashley DeCubis, an attorney. Dan Myers, architect. Dan Myers, architect. And tonight joining us is uh, Dennis Fernandez, Ron Vila, Beverly Jusek, and our uh, attorney tonight is Kamaria Pettis Mackle. I move to approve the minutes from Sorry. Monday, August 2nd, and Wednesday, August 4th. I'll second the motion. Can we add in the year, please? 2021. I'll second. All in favor, state aye and aye. raise aye. your hand. Aye. Aye. Those opposed, seeing none, the, uh, the readings, the minutes are entered into the record. And now we'll turn to Dennis Fernandez for any announcements. Good evening, uh, Commissioners, and uh, welcome to this evening's uh, public hearing for the month of September. Uh, we do have uh, a little bit of an unusual split in our cases, so we're handling part of our caseload this evening, and then we'll be having another public hearing next Wednesday, September 22nd at 6 o'clock as well. Uh, and we'll, we'll be handling the rest of our September cases uh, at, on that evening. Uh, in addition to that information, I do have the staff approvals to enter into the record. Ms. Jusak uh, has been provided a copy of those. And uh, that uh, do have a copy of the uh, 2022. Um, sounds a little difficult to say that year. Uh, that, uh, of the calendar that's in your packet, uh, we will be electronically e emailing that to you as well for your convenience. Uh, just so that you can prepare your calendars for uh, next year. Uh, with that, I will turn it over to our legal counsel to deal with the conflicts of interest and ex parte communication. Good evening, Commissioners. Kamaria pettis Mackle from the City Attorney's Office. Will the Commissioners uh, please state whether or not they've had any ex parte communications regarding any of the items on the agenda? No. None. None. Thank you. 
Additionally, will the commissioners please state on the record whether or not they have any conflicts of interest regarding the items, any of the items on the agenda? None. None. All right, thank you so much. And now Ron will handle the continuation. Good evening, commissioners. Ron Vila, I'm staff with Historic Preservation. Under continuations, we have two. Uh, they're getting continued to uh, two separate dates, so we need two separate motions. The first one is ARC 21-406 for the address of 203 West Fern Street and 202 West Beach Place. That was requested by the agent to be continued to the November 1st, 2021 public hearing at 6 p.m. And if we could get a motion for that, please. I move that the project ARC 21-406 for the location to, uh, 203 West Vern Street and 202 West Beach Place be continued to the uh, 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 public hearing on November 1st, 2021 at 6 p.m. I'll second that motion. All in favor, please say aye and raise your hands. Aye. aye. And any opposed? Seeing none, the motion passes. Thank you for that motion. And the second continuation is ARC 21-44, excuse me, 433 for the address of 832 South Boulevard. What we did here is we asked the agent and the owner if they were willing to continue to our September 22nd public hearing at, at 6 p.m. so we could balance out the agenda. So if we could get a motion for the continuation from tonight's hearing to September 22nd. May I hear a motion, please? Got it. I move that ARC 21433 for the property uh, located at 832 South Boulevard uh, be continued to the September 22nd, 2021 meeting. At 6 p.m. At 6 p.m. I'll second the motion. All in favor, please state aye and raise your hand. Aye. 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 Opposed, seeing none, the motion carries. Thank you for that motion. Moving down the agenda to the swear-in, everybody that wishes to testify, please stand up and raise your right hand. Ms. Juzak will swear us in, and that's including staff. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony is Moving to the first case that's reflected on our agenda is ARC 21-367. This is for the address of 502 East Robo Street. This is in the Tampa Heights Historic District. Some past action on this property is that there was a contributing structure on that. It received approval for demolition uh, at the administrative level on January of 2021. So currently there's a vacant parcel there. The underlying zoning attached to it is RS-50. The request is for a certificate of appropriateness for new construction, for a primary structure, for a detached accessory structure with some site improvements. The total square footage of uh, the, the request on site is about 3,000 square feet. Moving to the photo essay. I'm starting out on this photo uh, presentation with the vicinity map. Property in question is highlighted in the green box. You see that uh, when this was first put out that there was uh, two contributing structures side by side. Uh, the first case is the one in the, in the shaded green area. The next case will be the abutting property to the east, but let's just focus on the one that's highlighted in the green parcel. Ron, can I just interject? Just to correct the record, these were non-contributing structures. Apologize. So this is on the corner of Robles and Central Avenue. Central Avenue is, is the main corridor. Uh, you'll see through the photo presentation some of the sensitivity that is there with the brick streets and the granite curbing. Uh, there is no alley that is behind the parcel, so the parcel will have to receive the automobile from, uh, you know, uh, customary through the alley but there is no alley on this on this site moving to the Sanborn map the Sanborn map property in question is also on the uh, shaded green area this is on the corner of Robles and Central again 
There was no alley back in 1929 when this uh, uh, map was constructed. You see the orientation for the structures on Robos. They have a, a exposure to the south. Uh, they do not face Central Avenue, so the orientation of the request tonight will mimic the historic pattern. Moving to the overhead shot here, you see uh, the, the tree canopies that surround the parcel here. Natural Resources has reviewed this property and the subject uh, site that's coming forward with the footprint has been reviewed and approved. This is just looking into the site. The non-contributing structures that were here have been removed. This is on the corner of Robos and you see Central kind of in the background. Moving to the next shot is the abutting property to the east. This will be the second uh, request that you'll see tonight. But just showing that both of these are empty parcels at this time. This here is looking back from Central Avenue, looking at some of the uh, original curbing here and the pedestrian walkways that went to the subject site. You see the sidewalk here and then it does have a knee wall that surrounds the property. This is looking at a linear shot, looking down Central Avenue, down the sidewalk to the north. This is the subject site to the north. This is looking at uh, some of the surrounding properties on uh, Central Avenue. This is a period home, contributing structure. This is also on Central Avenue. This is across Central to the west. This next house here is looking across Robles. This is to the south. To jump back on Central Avenue, you see the historic brick. You see the wide streets, the granite curbing, the parkway, and then the sidewalk on both sides has the same detail. This is looking at Central Avenue to the south. Once again, just the, the historic fabric here is, is the brick streets lined by the granite curbing. The parkways on each side has a buffer zone for the pedestrian sidewalk. This is looking down Robles. It terminates into the interstate. There are no sidewalks on, on Robles. This is looking to the east. And then to conclude with the last shot, this is looking down Robles. This is Central Avenue. Subject site is to the right. And um, at this time, that concludes the photo presentation. And I'll have the agent come forward and address the board. Come on. Uh, thank you, Ron. Good evening, commissioners. My name is uh, Shane O'Neill with Viking Homes. We built uh, 137 homes in the Heights neighborhoods, uh, three of them being located here in the Tampa Heights Historic District. So we are familiar with the, the uh, request and desires of, of the committee. Um, this is a quick precursor. This is the, uh, the home we did on uh, uh, 504 East Park Avenue. And we did about well, four streets north of this, uh, Robles, we did, uh, they all happen to be blue because the clients chose, they all happen to chose blue for the color. But uh, this is 304 and 306 East Adderley. Um We took our inspiration for the Robles uh, projects from this particular project here. I just want to show you guys that we, we have been down this road before with you for the Tampa Heights area. We're going to start off tonight with the site plan. As you can see here, the, the main structure uh, faces Robles. I wanted to take advantage of that, of that corner lot, so we did a wraparound porch. As you can see, we have the entry to the garage um, coming off of North Central Avenue. Again, uh, I, I think the, the detached garage um, fits right in in terms of the historic fabric of the, of the neighborhood. We, uh, we've notated here that we're going to do a, a white uh, vinyl fence. It'll flank both sides of the garage, come around. There's your, your gate there and on the other side as well. We located the mechanical equipment on the far side away from the street um, on this particular house. If you look at the, the driveway and the walkway, we have the historic scoring 
kind of notated there. Um, we'll get to the elevation soon, but you can see the, the, the welcome walls on either side of the front door of the porch. They have a seven foot deep front porch. Um, if you can look over here, uh, Ron kind of showed it in his presentation. We're going to be getting rid of that, that uh, the walkway. We will be keeping and restoring, if necessary, the small knee wall that runs along the property line. And uh, obviously we'll be fixing or, or making sure the existing sidewalk is intact uh, when the project is, uh, is all done. You guys are interested really in the, in the floor plan, but this is kind of another overhead view to show you the, the extent of the wraparound porch. It shows the welcome walls, the wide steps. Um, again, that's very close to uh, what we did on, on 304 uh, East Adderley, a couple of streets north of this. What you will not see on here, uh, it might be too small for you to see, but the, the column diameter is 24 by 24, nice substantial bases on them. Uh, it'd be a, a, wood, a wood cap, and then again, referring back to this photo, the tapered column at the top. This is uh, elevations of the garage. We changed the, the roof of the structure to a gable to mimic the front, uh, the main house. This is what we will be doing. Uh, I'll show you the, the exact door that we picked out here uh, later on in the presentation, but this shows you that uh, the, the gable, um, shingle siding and the brackets will mimic the, the main house and you have the, the mixing up of, of uh, materials there with the lap and the, and the shingle and then the 12-inch uh, freeze board. Um, on, on our historic homes, we use regular hardy plank siding to, to sheath the building, and then our trim is actually a two-by framing material, so it gives that depth, it gives you the, uh, the reveal that you, you uh, so often see in the historic uh, neighborhoods. I'm gonna move on to the elevations of the main house. When we printed it out in the small scale, it kind of made the, the roof fuzzy, but that's all shingle. It's going to be a shingle roof. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And again, I'm not sure if you can, if you can see it on the overhead, but, but the columns, again, are, are substantial. They're 24 by 24 tapered, tapered tops. Um, you can see the brackets illustrated, three there, five on top, with the gable vent, with shingle siding as well. Um, on these homes, we'll have the... 12 inch, a uh, 10 inch uh, freeze board at the bottom running around to start the, the siding going up. Um, we have uh, exposed rafter tails. We're scabbing on two by six tails, so it'll be a substantial tail. We'll have a two by eight uh, fascia on these um, and then uh, beadboard, beadboard uh, soft bit uh, on, the, on the underside of the, uh, oh, on the top side of the, uh, the, of the tails themselves. We try to, to stack the windows best we can without completely changing the floor plan too much. So as you can see on the front, um, we, kind of, we kind of staggered everything, or we kind of lined everything up. On this particular house, we're doing a nice substantial uh, wood front door, two side lights, kind of a craftsman look. On this one, it's gonna be uh, six, eight tall. And then uh, the windows on this particular house are going to be uh, hurricane, so you won't have the little knobs for the impact protection. As you can tell here on the stem wall, we're doing a stem wall. We're going to be two inches taller than the neighboring home. So we're 26 inches above the crown of the road to give it a nice substantial look from the, from the street. Um, this is the house directly to the east of us, new constru newer construction. So we are we're about two inches uh, taller than, than that home next to us to the right. Again, just to, to help with the curb appeal and give it that nice uh, propped up stance. This is the elevation of the rear and the west side of the house. Again, you can see the mixing of materials. We have the gable vents on the side. We have the uh, shingle siding along with the lap. And again, just to reiterate, all the trim work on the home will be a two by framing material, which will again give it the depth that it needs um, to mimic that, that historic look. To dive a little deeper into the particulars of the, the finishes. This is a, a rough 3D image we had made. It was really hard for him to display or, or illustrate the, the, the rafter tails, but again, this is just a, a 3D image. 
and have no mullions in the windows uh, themselves. It will be block on bottom, frame on top. So for our windows on top that go, that get framed, what we actually do is we use, we use vinyl MI windows, but we actually will frame the top out of a two by six and we'll inset a two by four buck. So when we apply, when we install the, the nail fin window itself, it will screw in and it'll actually be recessed into the opening along with the thicker trim. It'll really have a nice, nice uh, look to it. Which I'd love to show you an example of that here. I mean, it's a really, really substantial inset you see on when we, when we couple the uh, insulation method with the, with the material for the trim. We'll get back into the cut section here toward the end. Here's some examples of um, hardware. We, we're fond of bronze on our homes uh, for lighting on the outside. What we typically do for our, our door hardware. All the homes we build, including these, what we do uh, tongue and groove, I'm not sure if that's a glare or not, but a tongue and groove, porch ceiling, stained. Uh, if a client's involved in whatever color they like, but we typically do a, um, a wood roof, a wood porch ceiling. This is a very just simple picture of, of a MI window that we use, white vinyl. This is an example of the um, outriggers or, or brackets that we, that we use. We use GAF shingles on these homes. And then this is an example of the product that we wrap the column with. The column with, it's a, it's a brick veneer. And we also use this to mimic piers on the side of the stem wall that you saw on the elevations. This is the garage door that we're hoping to use. And uh, after speaking with Ron, I think what we're, we're going to do is instead of doing two, and I know the old historic homes, garages have separate doors. And instead of doing that, we're going we're gonna to go ahead and do hardware on each side and make it, give it the, you know, the general appearance of, of two doors. But we're going to hopefully want to use this door here on the garage itself. And then circle back real quick. This is what was originally there. Again, we're going to maintain and repair this, uh, this knee wall here. And then we're going to get rid of this and we'll, we're going to landscape and everything the, the right away. Of course, with the driveway cut, we're going to sink the, the granite curb as we should in this, in this area. And then lastly, circling back around to the um, cut section. Again, the, the main point of this was to show you guys that we have the two by six uh, rafter tails on the roof, on the roof line. And then again, just to illustrate how our windows inset despite being in block or wood. I think that kind of sums it up if you guys have any questions at all for me or any comments. Yep. If that concludes your presentation, then we'll move on to the staff report and then we'll have an um, open period. Okay. <clears throat> Good evening, Commissioner Ron Vila, uh, staff with Historic Preservation. Staff's finding that this application is consistent with the Tampa Heights design guidelines. Just to remind you, the request in front of you this evening is for a certificate of appropriateness for new construction for the primary structure, for the detached accessory structure, and with site improvements. On page three of your staff report, uh, staff has some conditions associated with our consistent uh, uh, determination. If the uh, applicant could go through um, the setbacks from the front yard to be consistent with the historic fabric on that block. I believe he has additional information that he could share with you. As I stated uh, through the photo presentation, Central Avenue is one of the main corridors through Tampa Heights. So on page three of the staff report, you know, I reiterated the sidewalk, the driveways and the walkways to be consistent with the fabric that's there. He did touch upon the granite curbing will be sunk where the apron will be uh, in place. The, park, the parkway should be maintained in the original form that it is. Uh, he did discuss uh, the knee wall and the, the part of the knee wall that is missing that will be uh, filled in to match the, the abutting sides. On the site plan, it illustrates that uh, a vinyl fence will be incorporated. When we look at fencing, we also look at the height of the fence, the location of the fence, the style of the fence to go along with the materials. So additional uh, documentation could be discussed. Initially on the uh, site plan that we reviewed, the mechanicals were on the street side on Central Avenue. On the site plan provided today, he, he has an alternative location for them. Uh, there was some discussion about increasing the overhangs to 24 inches. 
Uh, you might want to elaborate on that as well. And then to conclude, um, for him to go through the wall section one more time to call out all the exterior materials and then show them uh, the materials that he brought to illustrate what his uh, vision is. And then on the elevation that faces Central Avenue on the second level, seems to be a void. He has two windows that, that flank each corner and usually uh, this, this pattern that he's showing, he's stacking the windows. Seems like there's a window missing on the second level and to discuss the floor plan and see if there's an incorporation of a window on the second level on the Central Avenue elevation. Uh, that concludes staff's portion. I'm here to answer any questions. Thank you. We'll now go ahead and open um, the hearing to public comment. Is anyone here that would like to speak for or against the project? Seeing no one, we'll go ahead and close that. And then um, what we're going to do now is let the commissioners ask questions sure. and then allow you time to respond. Okay. So um, I would like to start with Commissioner um, I can't think of Tim Myers, sorry. <laughs> Commissioner Myers, who I've known for like 25 years. Uh, <laughs> Please, if you don't mind, if you have any questions. Um. So you said the the two by framing is that also Hardy? Is that Hardy plank or that's actual two by framing material? Like a oh, so, lumber. So, okay, so it's yeah. a, it's a wood material. It's a, it's a wood it's a okay. wood treated material. And uh, I know that Ron has requested some additional information. Would you care to respond to? Oh, yeah. is, is that of course? Can we do that? Yes, I think. Yeah. Okay. So uh, in regard to the fence, just to reiterate, uh, this dark this heavy line here is the fence line. And what we intend to do is, uh, again, this is the neighbor. This is a 506, a Robles, a newer, newer construction. We're going to mimic their, their six foot. Um, we're not going to do the fence in the front, the small one. We're going to mimic the six foot vinyl fence that they have um, around each of these homes, the 502 and 504. That's our hope anyways. Um, and then uh, to clarify, the 24 inch overhang, that, that was incorporated. I, mm -hmm. I know I didn't specifically call it out during the presentation, but the overhangs are going to be two by six uh, scabbed on, but they will be 24 inches long. And then to address the comment slash concern about this side of the house, and, and I know from previous uh, submittals that you guys loved when we stacked the windows, and again, it was kind of like a Jenga situation where you're trying to finagle the, the floor plan. Um, I think that if, if I tweak it hard enough and work hard enough, I think I can get to a spot where I can add a window here just to give this kind of a full, you know, avoid that, that void section. I think I can make that work. Any additional questions, Commissioner Myers? Uh, no, I have no further right, questions. Right. Um, he mentioned something about the setback, so you had some additional information? Yes. Um, so we, the good thing about doing the two houses in a row is that we actually are, so I will be in line with the house I'm building next door, and then also right in line with the front porch of this home. So we, they're all three kind of, we're used to doing the, the uh, setback averages, so we're basically in line with 506. Uh, as is proposed, we're in line with 506. Okay. These roles. Um, you did confirm the overhang was 24 inches? Correct. Okay. And the faux brick columns, were there any other alternative to those? I was told not to use the word faux. Um, <laughs> it's a brick veneer. Okay. Um, so. <laughs> What, what happens is if you use a real brick, then they end up sticking out further than that freeze board and it just looks awkward aesthetically. So, so especially for the, for the, um, the stem wall mm -hmm. uh, faux columns, um, the, the brick veneer works best in my opinion. Um, the, the, they, they, again, they look, I mean, I'll give you the picture again. They uh, emulate real brick very well. This is, this is the house next door to this one. Again, we, we can do something different if, if you need if needed to on the columns, like a real brick. But as far as the stem wall piers, that seems to be the best solution. Okay. To, to that. To that and then, could you go over the um, the what did he ask for? The not the yeah maybe the elevations. I think is what. Yeah. Uh, or the wall uh, sections. Just call out oh, some yeah. more of your. Absolutely. Um, paper up here. Um, 
Okay. So again, uh, circling back around, I've got a 24 inch long two by six tail here with B-board on the top side. Um, it's gonna be hardy siding, standard hardy siding, six inch reveal. Um, all the trim on the windows and the corners will be the two by framing material, so it'll, it's uh, over an inch and a half thick. We'll give you that reveal. Once more, our, our frame windows, nail fin are inset, recessed beyond what they typically are, and then with the framing around that, it gives you a real nice reveal. Um, same thing with uh, downstairs, a block is going to be inset because it's a, uh, uh, a block window. Coming down, as you can see on the other photos here, the siding is going to start with, I guess what's called a freeze band. Something like that. Are there any other questions uh, particular pertaining to the wall section? Not from me, thank you. Okay. Commissioner, do you have any further questions? What is that depth on the window inset? The total depth? The well, just to, to the window from the, s the sill location. It's uh, two inches. Two inches recessed from the face of the, of the sheathing. And can you tell us the size of your brackets? The actual size? Just nominal size of the... They're made on site, but typically, so 24 inch overhang, you're going to have at least uh, two and a half feet out. And then whatever dimension kind of works you know, visually with, with, you know, for example... So are you using four by four? Six yeah, by four by four. Okay. Exactly. I mean, we just kind of gauge it on site depending on, you know, is it on top of a, of a column? Is it, you know, we, we would match the, the depth of the, of the vent. Again, it's kind of a situational thing depending on how it all lays out. It'll but, but they would like, be. It'll mimic these, but it'll be made out of four by fours on site. Exactly. Okay. Which is which is what these are. These are four by fours, and they're they're kind of shaped at the end. Right. Yep. That's all I have now. Right. Commissioner Commissioner Sutton. Sir, uh, you've uh, made as part of your presentation this evening uh, a number of photographs, past product of yours. Yes. Uh, within uh, the Hyde Park and surrounding areas. Uh, have you submitted those photographs as part of your proposal package to staff? And the reason why I bring that up is there are some minor detailed inconsistencies between the photographs of your finished product versus uh, what you show in your drawings at this point in time. Uh, a key item, as an example, is your garage door, which is still up in the air a little bit. Sure. But you have a very solid idea of what you want to do by your photographic record. Right. I'm thinking about the, uh, the, your photographs being a, if you will, a touchstone uh, for staff coordination purposes. You're asking if they are touched up? No, uh, they would be as a, uh, a touchstone oh. uh, uh, for coordination purposes with, uh, with staff who would be sure. reviewing your work in process. That's why I was asking the question from the get-go, have you submitted those sample photographs of your finished product as part of your design proposal package? I believe I, I submitted some of them for certain examples. Again, the garage door, I believe. Um, I'm pretty sure I, I submitted most of them. And, and just to circle back on that comment, I, I don't typically like to reproduce models. I like to do something unique each time. I figured if I kind of went by the guidelines of these, where we were approved before and everyone loved them, that, that would be the easiest path forward. Um, again, so the 502 we're talking about now, as far as the facade goes, it, it will mimic this one, other mm -hmm. than the gable, obviously no windows in it, but it's, it's a lot more, more of a grand gable. Yeah, I understand the, uh, the closeness yeah. of the two different proposals between what is past and what is going on now. However, uh, it, it gets to be sort of like a question mark as to what's actually going to happen when your schematic drawings uh, omit some of the detail or, or are different in some of the detail with respect to what you show, uh, what, the, what your photographic record brings to us. Sure. Garage door is one, entry doors are another one uh, that I have a question on. Uh, your photographs do very, very well explain what you're planning to do with your thin brick and how that integrates into your uh, design proposal. Sure. So to me, uh, that becomes an important part of your package. Right. Agreed. Agreed. Okay. If I could interject, Ron Vila staff with Historic Preservation. So through his presentation tonight, he showed some drawings and then he showed some illustrations, some photos, and he did a complete presentation using both of those instruments. As he moves forward, we're going to review the drawings that come forward as he goes to uh, his construction drawings. 
So the drawing, the, the images that he showed should be incorporated into his final drawings. Thank you very much, Ron. Commissioner Boyd. Um, I have a question first for staff. With the house being on a corner lot, um, can you just confirm that the six foot high fence is appropriate in all the proposed locations? One more time, that the what is appropriate? Six foot high fence is appropriate everywhere that it's proposed. With the orientation of the parcel on the corner, Robles is the front, so the side facing Central Avenue does meet zoning at a six foot high. What we usually request is that he sets it in maybe eight inches from the sidewalk to leave a little buffering for the pedestrian and do a, a small planting area at that point, not putting the, the fence all the way to the sidewalk. Perfect, thank you. Um, can we see your elevation that shows the mechanical units, the air conditioning? Yes. Uh, the. You want the, the the site plan or the elevation? The elevation. Elevation. This is. This is from the rear. On the Can left we see corner. it from the other end as well? Yeah. So understanding that you relocated it, but there it does appear that there's a conflict with the window and the air conditioning unit. So is it possible to shift it? Uh, yes, the, uh, the only reason why the guy who put it all together, he, I think he just has this too far back. I can I can easily move this, this this gate forward and then kind of shift this unit kind of in this dead area here. Perfect. Absolutely. Um, and then can we just see your site plan really quickly? Sure. Um, I understand it's a garage, but I just wanted to uh, make sure that there was no intention for windows on the, um, the elevation of the garage that faces the house. Um, not as it stands. I, I did think about that. We, we did do that. We, we were requested to do that on, on the other home, but that home was, was visible from the street. This one will be completely concealed in the backyard. I mean, there, as it sits now, there is no plan. Um, if that is a deal breaker of some kind, I can, I can look at that. Okay. Um, I don't have any additional questions. So I, I do have a few. Would you mind putting the elevations up for the accessory? Yes. All elevations that you have. So this is truly the elevations for the intended structure on this property, correct? This is not a standard detail sheet for your properties that you do? What, what was missed on, on this actual elevation, I think the only thing that is missing, he has the vent there. He, what, I, what I intend to do, because I think it looks nicer, I don't think he properly shows. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm glad you put that up. Could you scooch, scooch that over? Yeah, bring it back, bring it back. There, that's good. So uh, one of the reasons why I asked you to put this up is I think your slopes are off. And that's why I was asking whether or not this was a standardized detail sheet. Your so, slopes look off on your drawings. Okay, so, so this, this garage yep. slope matches this gable. Remember this, the one I'm proposing 502 has a much more broad gable, so it has a, a lower slope. So, th so this, this slope matches the slope it of matches the, the primary structure right, it's slope. a much larger gable okay it just looks really off and maybe it's maybe it's the detailing of the gable itself yeah the scale the scale just looks off and i would suggest that there be some review of that sure and then um if you do intend to put any bracketing that needs to be reflected on these drawings as well no problem um and then obviously the garage door should be addressed per our discussions tonight. And then could you go ahead and put the east and the north elevation sheet back up for the primary? Yes. And again, just to, to comment on the garage door situation. Yeah. I mean, you guys know there's a lot of COVID stuff going on with, with a supply chain. Garage yep. doors are a nightmare. 
So yep. I, I didn't want to get too in the weeds with putting a door on there. And then then in, in nine months, the door shows up and it's a little different because it wasn't available. I just didn't know how to address that. I understood. Yeah. Um, but typically what we like to see is if, if there is a discussion point that we've made tonight and we've all sort of agreed to a direction, sure. that at least your schematics reflect that because we do understand that. I mean, right. most of us are in the building industry, design right. industry. So we understand that. Okay. But as we're having these discussions and as sure. you work with staff, yep. things are going to change anyway. Sure. Right? Um, so I wanted to talk about the east or the west elevation. I actually asked for the east and the north, but you can you can put those up in a bit. The west, the west was also on my on my. Um, Let me see if I can. That'll work. That'll work if you could just straighten out the. Yep, there you go. Um, I know we talked about balancing out the east elevation. For me, the west elevation. I just wanted to understand the shifting in the the window in the middle there at the top That's what the top was the going on with that so again thinking back to the request in the past about stacking windows what i did is i started with our our standard layout and then i started trying to add more in there to to you know, appease the the council um the 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 one odd man out window there that's in the top of the staircase um, okay that can be removed if that is more aesthetic no I, I mean to be honest historically windows were placed as needed and and we tend to think of everything as being symmetrical and sure. you know everything has to have a place but sometimes it's in response to the context so right. these questions aren't generally to say thou shalt it's trying right. to understand the thinking behind where you landed yeah so even like in this front master it, it really uh breaks my heart to have like you know these two here and then this one it really just kind of uh kills your standard like bedroom wall TV wall, you know, it, it, the more I add, the more wonky it gets, uh, in my personal opinion. So I, I try to balance those two the best I can. Understood, understood. Okay, um, let me see if I have any other. Just wanna make sure that we covered everything. Uh, there was staff comment about the parkway. Can you address that comment? The, oh yes. Parkway meaning the, the right of way on the central side? I believe that is the discussion point. Yeah, and then just to reiterate, we're gonna be doing away with the walkway there that kind of goes nowhere. We're gonna repair the um, knee wall that's there. And then we're going to restore, I think I have the photo here. We're going to restore the right of way and then landscape it along with the rest, rest of the property. Ron, does that hit all of the discussion points that you wanted? It does. <laughs> But I'd like to uh, go back to the fence uh, discussion. Yep. Uh, in Tampa Heights, they have some unique language that I'd like to share with you. Absolutely. So to illustrate this on the site plan, the language on page 69 and fences in the Tampa Heights design guidelines discusses fences and walls along the front facade and along the rear corner yard along the building facing the street shall be no higher than four foot. Fences that may increase in height to a maximum of a six foot high behind the, the setback. So basically what's illustrating here is that there's no fencing here to here. This portion of the fence needs to drop down to four foot to it gets to the back of the house or just move this back to the rear of the house connected to the rear of the house then go six foot to to the, the Central Avenue and then to the north. So this okay. little okay. section here needs to be modified to meet the Tampa Heights design guidelines. And just to be clear too, I'm, I'm happy I, happy to do that and I'm happy to move that fence back a foot or so and again landscape there because I'm, I'm not a fan of a big fence wall either. Yep, So I'm okay. happy to do that. All right, great. Yep. Well, that that is the, the bulk of my questioning. Any other comments from the board or the commission? Just for clarification, on the garage, are you trying to mimic the house slope or the porch slope? The, the I'm, gable, the gable, uh, the, the, the large gable slope. Uh, you got a 512 that looks like on the main porch <coughs> of the house and then a 312 on the porch. And then the gable is a five as well. I can't read that. Yeah, it's a 512 on, on that and. So I'm thinking the illustration is just off. That very well could be. Let me see. 
you look at A31, it's showing a 312. Uh, here we go. Yeah, you're 100% right. So you, you were right in, in that looking a little off. I'll definitely make that correction. Um, but yeah, that, that's the goal is to have that roof pitch match that, that gable. So I have that noted. And the only other question I had was on the windows, I'm seeing some one over one and some two over two. What are you? Uh, no, so we're, we're, doing, we're doing no mullions. Okay. We get into the weeds with the true divided glass, so I just, we just go no mullions on, on, these, on this house. All right. That's all I have. Commissioners, have any other comments? I have none. No. All right, that. Oh, um, oh I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Dan. <laughs> I just want to remind you that um, you've shown us a, a door without side lights on the submission, right? Yes. In the drawings, but it's going to have side lights. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, so that's another note that you can give your yes. That you can give your guy. Absolutely. <laughs> Commissioners, I, this is Dennis Fernandez, administrator. Just. If someone could kind of serve as Scrivener, I think that these changes need to be part of the motion mm -hmm. uh, so that it's specific when it comes back to the staff, we have the ability to kind of make sure that it meets your uh, expectations. Agreed, thank you. All right, um, we will allow you five minutes now for rebuttal if you have any comments that you'd like to make to enter into the record. Um, no, that's basically what, what I have to present. Uh, again, a couple of things like the door and whatnot. I, Admittedly, last minute, I thought about some other things that may make it more appealing. The door itself didn't make it on the on the uh, elevation, and the uh, the shingle siding didn't make it on the garage elevation. So those are the reason for the disconnect there. But other than that, I think uh, that's all I wanted to present tonight on this one. Thank you very much. Sure. All right, we'll close the public hearing, and the commissioners and I will discuss the case. Would anyone like to start if they have any questions or comments? I think I'm good. Not, looks like you got a good list over there. I do. Okay. <laughs> I would like to discuss the uh, stacked windows in the in the mass. We're at we, you know we're adding a, a window in the master bedroom in order to get a stacked look. Yes. On the east side, and we're not adding a window on the west side because and it appears to be a little vacant over there. Um, yeah. I concur with. Uh, uh, our, our chair tonight, uh, Ms. Smith, Ms. Smith, that, uh, that our windows can follow the function. And so uh, I would not be too concerned about losing a window on the, on the east side and allowing the elevation as displayed to, to go move forward on the west side. Okay. Are there any thoughts on the faux or should say faux brick veneer versus real brick on the columns? We've actually seen that before mm -hmm. the commission, and I understand the the issue there. I mean, we've we've looked at wall details enough to know that that does complicate things. I mean, it becomes an issue of how you design your stem wall then to accept that, right? Well, and that was why I asked more about the column than the stem. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. To the to the lay person, they, they, it looks like real brick, you know, and that's the that's the beauty of it is is it does have the materiality of it. I mean, you can feel it, you know. It's just if you took it off, you know. <laughs> any other comments about it? I mean, if we have any concerns, any others? No. No. So, would anyone like to make a motion? I would. I'm on the wrong I move to grant a, cert a certificate of appropriateness for the drawings and documents presented at this public hearing in ARC 21-367 for the property located at 502 East Robles Street with the following conditions. That as feasible, an additional window is provided and a on the east elevation as approved by staff 
um, that space and planting is provided between the pedestrian walkway and the fence, as well as the fence is uh, relocated to align with the northwest corner of the um, main structure to align with page 69 of the design guidelines. That the um, fence gate and AC unit are shifted toward the front of the main structure to alleviate conflict with the window. Uh, that the accessory structure elevation is updated to reflect the freeze board, shingles, brackets, and pitch of the roof to match the pitch of the main structure's roof. And that the el front elevation is updated to reflect the front door and side lights proposed at tonight's hearing. Because based upon the finding of fact, the proposed project is consistent with the Tampa Heights design guidelines for the city of Tampa for the following reasons. That the massing, setback, alignment, um, and trim and detail is consistent with the guidelines. I'll second that motion. All in favor, please say, state aye and raise your hand. Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. We have five to one in favor, so the motion passes. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Oh, you, yeah. It's close, that's how we're <laughs> Next time. <laughs> Good evening, Commissioners. Ron Vila, staff for the Historic Preservation. Moving to the uh, next case is ARC 21-368 for the address of 504 East Robo Street. Uh, currently, it's a vacant lot. The uh, zoning tied to this parcel is RS50. The request is new construction for a primary structure. This one also has a detached accessory structure with some site improvements. Moving to the photo presentation. This is our vicinity map. Uh, property in question is highlighted in a green uh, box. This is just to the east of the site that we just saw. This is on Robos, faces Robos. It does have Central Avenue to the west, and you see the interstate uh, to the east. Looking at the Sanborn map, there was a period structure there back in 1929 as reflected on this map. Um, there was a staff approval to demo the non-contributing structure that was here so we're starting with a vacant parcel looking from above once again there's a series of trees there with the canopies this was reviewed by natural resources and the site plan presented it did meet their criteria looking at the parcel from robos this is looking to the north into the site um, you see the heavily vegetated uh, area here with a canopy of camphor trees. To the east, you have this new construction that came in and was reviewed and approved. This is an important reference to use for the front yard averaging and elevation from grade, as he did on the, on the previous model. This is just looking at some of the uh, structures in the immediate vicinity. This is Robos, to, and then across the street to the south, this is a non-contributing structure. Looking down Robos to the east as it terminates into the interstate. Property in question is over here to the left. And to conclude, this is looking down Robos to Central Avenue. And once again, the property in question is to the right. At this time, the agent will address the board. Thank you. The mattresses are gone from the lot, by the way. Just wanted to make sure that was clear. Talk him. This is just a reference point is where we Sir, started. Can you the... put your name on the record again, please? Oh, yeah, my name is uh, Shane O'Neill with Viking Homes. I'm the owner builder of uh, 504 East Robles. Uh, for reference, this is uh, where we started. This is the non-contributing structure that, structure that we demoed where we started. I thought going with a one story next to the two story is a nice uh, change of a facade, uh, you know, massing 
bit of a massing difference there. Um, we originally started with a portico share off the right side. The, the spacing didn't work. We have that big tree off the, there off to the left, so we kind of made some tweaks, got rid of the, the portico. Um, we have a one-car garage in the back with the ribbon drive. Um, historical scoring is illustrated there. Um, again, if you look down here, you'll have the welcome walls on either side of this, nice big, nice big steps, and then you have the, the walkway that turns into the, the driveway. We, uh, at the behest of the suggestion of um, the ARC, we kind of scooted this. We shortened the, the apron and scooted this driveway as far over as we could to try to eliminate that kind of strange uh, jag in the, in the driveway. Um, all traditional set setbacks were adhered to. Um, if you look here as well, again, referring to the dark line, this is uh, the fencing, the six foot uh, vinyl fence. And actually on this one, I, I'm, I'm not a proponent of putting a fence across a driveway, so actually this one kind of turns and dies into the garage back here. So this is actually open, and then this back area is fenced in. Moving on to the elevation, just kind of give you a perspective of the uh, size of the rear porch with some inset steps here off of the driveway. And then uh, a little bit closer view of the welcome walls off the columns and then the wide stairs. Uh, this, is, this is a good time to, look. actually I'll, I'll come back to the, uh, the cut section on this one. structure first. Again, same kind of issue with the, uh, the printing, the, the roof kind of printed out in a strange format, but uh, a shingle, shingle roof on this. And then again, referring back to, actually this is a good example here, this is our, our 3D mock-up of this house. Again, it's going to tie in pretty close with the house next door. You have the, uh, the windows dying into the freeze band there, you have shingle siding, you have brackets again, you have the gable vents here. Um, two foot overhangs, again, two by six rafter tails uh, scabbed on at the end. You've got the two by framing material as a trim, two inch thick sill on all the windows. Um, and we're gonna, we're gonna clad the welcome walls to match the columns. There was some question here about the, the width of the steps and where the welcome wall should be. I just kind of think that aesthetically it kind of looks better um, flanking the columns as opposed to the steps, but again, we can talk about that. Kind of going back here to the um, elevations, the AC equipment's in the back of the house. Um, you can see here it's illustrated, it's kind of blurry, but uh, again, this is the um, shingle siding, cable vents on this with the freeze board above. Um, you have the, the uh, brackets on both of these cables, matching shingle and freeze board here. Um, you can see on the elevation here, it's gonna be the um, brick veneer uh, over stem wall to mimic the um, period appropriate piers. We kept all the windows at a three foot wide by five and a half foot tall. Uh, where we had to go smaller, we kept them kept them narrow to kind of you know blend in as best they can with the rest of the windows. Moving on to the garage. It's kind of hard to make out here, but again, this is notating two foot overhangs on everything, uh, two by eight uh, fascia. The, the door drawn in, the garage door drawn in on this is not truly reflective of the actual door that we're looking to do. This is our this is our single uh, garage door we're looking to to install on the garage. In this house we're going to do we're hoping to do a single door but eight foot tall, nice grand. Grand entrance there. This is our standard um, bronze hardware, and then a very craft, craftsman-esque fixture for the lighting on the porch. And uh, along with that, we're going to do the uh, one by six uh, tongue and groove pine stained on the porch ceiling. Again, this goes back to a past project to give you another perspective. Uh, to, again, to show how the brick ties in on both sides. Um, you saw the trim work here, vents on top. Another look at the uh, Hurricane uh, 
uh, impact MI vinyl windows. They will be inset into the openings with the thicker trim, the two-inch trim, so you'll have a nice, again, a nice reveal. As a matter of fact, this is a good perspective here as to what that window will end up really looking like. Nice big reveal in the back, and then you'll see the, the uh, very deep inset down the sides. Let's do a GAF shingle on the roof. Just a reference back to the, the type of columns, the 4x4 material cut and made on site to fit, depending on the uh, way it lays out. And then this is an example of the brick veneer that will be used, hopefully be used for the column bases, the welcome walls, and then the pier, the piers on the side of the stem wall. I'm going to jump back over to the elevation, or the, uh, the cut section. Here, yeah, maybe kind of hard to make out what refers to a two foot overhang, two by six uh, bead board underneath. We have the window, as you can see, completely inset. You'll have the freeze board above, uh, the two by framing material trim here, the freeze board below, and then this is where the pier starts. Uh, this house, again, like the last house, is 26 inches above the crown of the road, which makes it two inch. The slab on the slab height is two inches taller than 506 East Robles, so it's, it keeps within the range of the uh, the, uh, the height in terms of the house. And I think that's all I have to, to present to you guys. Do you have any questions or comments on on this one? We will move on to the staff report. Okay. Good evening, Commissioners. Ron Avila, staff with Historic Preservation. For 504 East Robos, the request was for a certificate of appropriateness for new construction, for the construction of the primary structure, for the detached accessory structure with some site improvements. Staff find that this application is consistent with the Tampa Heights design guidelines that were submitted uh, into our office for review. On page three of the staff report, um, he did address the majority of the items. There were two that I think still need additional uh, discussion. One is the, to revisit the placement of the welcome walls and the piers on the, on the front. And then um, it seems that there's a, a, an odd number of piers associated with the uh, left elevation. I think it might be on the right elevation too, but I just saw the left elevation uh, the cadence down the side it seems like there's there's very many. I'm, I'm sure he could uh, uh, eliminate every other one probably as he moves forward to be more appropriate with the cadence of a, of a historic home. Uh, that concludes my portion here, and I'll be here to answer any questions. Thank you. Sorry, I do speak loud. Um, <laughs> seeing no one coming forth, we will go ahead and close the public comment portion and we'll allow commissioners to begin asking questions and I'll start on my left this time with Commissioner Boyd. Um, can you go ahead and start by addressing the quantity of the peers? Uh, yes. I'm more than happy to eliminate every other work with Ron on that and get, a, get an accurate measurement and, and reduce the number of those, those uh, veneer piers. Okay. I agree that it's probably too many. Yes. Uh, um, can we look at your site plan? So I see the little jog in the driveway. There's, this is as close as we could get to a straight driveway. I can go smallest flare that they'll allow me. Um, we, we went down, I believe, from a six to a five or four. If there's a little bit more leeway, I would, I would prefer to have a straight driveway if they would give me some leeway on the building side uh, with that flare. And is, I'm not sure who this question is even for, but I don't know if there's enough space to 
Like, can you have the ribbon aligning like right up abutting to the house? You could. You can. It it does it does occur historically. Okay. okay. I can show you a couple of examples in my neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. Your front elevation, please. Yes. To clarify, I am happy to move the ribbons off the home with a buffer of some a landscaping buffer if that's desired. No, it's it was just a question. It, that's yeah. fine. But if I did that, would that be an issue? Because thinking about it, were you saying it, bring it to my ear, that might cause some sort of a functional issue. People driving, if they park somewhere next to the house, I don't know how they're going to get out of the car. Um, so. I think we can table this for a discussion point. When, okay. when, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Um, elevation? Front elevation, please. So I believe that you said that you were going to do an eight-foot door, and I just want to confirm or have your team confirm that this is drawn correctly because the head height of the door looks lower than the head height of the, the window. The rear, they're both drawn at 6'8 on this drawing. Okay, the, perfect. The front door needs to be altered. So we'll just update that on your drawing. Um, and then your welcome walls aligning with the piers. Do you have any, so well, that's your previous house. Do you have any historic reference for that or that's just something that you've been It's just, uh, I, I mean, I didn't bring any with me today. I'm sure I can find some, but that's how I've seen them is like that, um, including I, I owned a 1956 bungalow on uh, West Comanche for 12 years. It was like that. Uh, again, I'm open to discussion. But I just thought visually that kind of looked the best. I agree it kind of poses a challenge for the stair situation. So, I mean, I'm open to, okay. to look at that further. And then you don't have details of your brackets today. Is that correct? I don't have the actual schematic of the bracket. Again, they're built on site um, to fit the condition. Again, if it's over a vent or if it's over, if it ends up being over. So last time we, we built these, uh, Aminta came out, talked to us on site. And, and actually requested we put them in a certain spot. So that, again, they're built by, by our, our, uh, our framers on site, the time of siting. Okay. Um, I don't have any more questions at the moment. Commissioner Sutton. I would like to uh, take a visit at your front porch, please. Okay. Uh, there are a couple elements here um, that perhaps might need some either further explanation or some tweaking. Sure. Uh, first of all, I understand what you're doing with your welcome walls. Right. But like you had shown us in your prior photograph, what you had done is you've actually taken those steps uh, that lead up onto that porch deck and extended those all the way over to the welcome wall, as opposed to having a freestanding element as you are showing here. Right. Uh, would you be inclined uh, to extend those landings to the welcome walls so that it becomes like, like this more of a monolithic element yeah. uh, as opposed to something that's been chopped up within the landscape. That way the steps, the welcome walls, the columns all are tied into as being the same elements. Sure. Because normally with the welcome walls, although you are correct, are normally shown with respect to their piers and columns, those piers and columns are also right beside the steps themselves. Okay, which is not the situation that you are providing here. Sure. Uh, if you were to extend it as you are showing here, I think there might be a greater degree of consistency that gives that, uh, you know, a, a valid, a valid point for existing. Sure. Now, in addition to this, as a valid point of it, uh, uh, for existing on this front porch, if I read the drawings correctly, I see also not just the front main stair, but I see a minor side stair to the to the apron. Yes. Can you explain how that's actually going to work? Because I almost see this as being, if you will, a, a, if you will, a tripping hazard. Sure. Uh, because you don't have a very large porch to live on or to work with, right. and now all of a sudden you have this hole. Sure. No, so, so to be to be frank with you about that again, typically when we build this this style home, we have a porcelain share. I don't mm -hmm. have to ask for a variance and all that. I don't want to go on that route. So typically, those stairs are there for you. Park, when you park underneath your portico share, you can walk up on the porch, go inside without getting wet. That's ideally how, it's, how the, the idea started. Um, leaving them there was a decision in that if you parked anywhere alongside your home, 
you know, you, you have to walk back around to your to the walkway mm -hmm. and then go. So it's just another means of egress or you know, a way to get onto the porch if you're parked along the side. I'm, I'm not opposed to not having them there, but again, I thought it would be a, a convenience thing. Well, uh, the question I have uh, for, uh, related to this is, is this being built on a speculative basis or do you actually have a client in, on hand for this? A spec, speculative okay. basis. So I was gonna add, you know, perhaps, you know, this would be a discussion to have with a potential client. Do they want that square footage either for access or for their front porch? Sure. There's, a, there's an element to be weighed there because it takes up enough room and enough access way that it steals away from the utility of, let's say, a sitting area on the front porch. Sure. I'm not saying it can't be decorative, right. but you know, it all depends on how you want to end up using this thing. Right. Because I do know that on the back porch, you also have that side entry, but it's, you know, that works in that respect because you're not, comp you're not fighting between two different stair orientations there. Sure. Makes total sense. And then sometimes too, again, when we get these, Build these houses high high enough. It also becomes a question of how 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 far is that that fall, mm -hmm. and then do you need a handrail? So that too is, and I have to look at that. But again, I'm I'm happy to because talk if about you that. need the handrail, you probably want to push it all the way to the wall, so you have some place to attach the handrail too. Right, right. Okay. Well, that's all I have for a question at this point in time. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Taylor. Are the ceiling heights nine foot? Uh, nine four. Okay. And what is the width of that freeze board? Uh, two by uh, two by ten or one by ten. I'm okay. sorry, it's a two by ten framing member on this okay. house. Okay. All right. So, and you're proposing an eight o door. It just kind of looks like it's going to get hidden in that line line of sight there. Um, so this. This is this model with the eight-foot door. So we always, we always keep our lintel or our, our header height for our windows always at eight, regardless of the door. Um, I just think that with the eight-foot door, it really just ties in to the rest of the house a lot better. And then again, it's instead of going uh, uh, like the house next door, the side lights just go a little bit taller. Just to, again, kind of change up the, the facade best we can. So is this example an eight-o door or is that yeah. a six-eight? That's an eight-o door. Okay. Yep. Can you confirm the roof pitch of the garage? Yes. Great question. Uh, five over five over twelve. Is a, a five? Five over twelve, and the front is six. One over two. Six over twelve. I'm happy to change that one as well too. So, can you pull up the elevation of the garage just so we can? Sure. Again, this one we're going to make sure and get him to add the freeze board here with the shingle siding. To, to match the house. To properly illustrate that, yeah. And Same for the, the record, back. can you just confirm for us what pitch you will be? A proposing? six. Okay. Yep. And then on the main structure, Okay, I'm seeing it now. I was going to ask about the gable vent, but I'm seeing it on the elevation. Yeah. There, there. I think that's all I have. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Jacobus? No questions. Commissioner Myers? Um, would you be willing to uh, lower the top of the uh, uh, stonework on the front, on those front columns? Lower the column base? Yeah, to the uh, sill height. Oh, sure. No problem. That also makes those uh, tapered columns, the tapered columns above, a little more elongated, which. Sure. And oh, the the door that you showed us was uh, the front door. Right. Had an odd finish. That's not the finish that you intended. Is that correct? No. no when I showed you the picture of that door, that's just a, that's an unfinished door. It oh, will be okay. wood, but it'll be stained to match the porch ceiling. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
It will have the dental shop and all that on there. Mm -hmm. cool. That it, it just in that finish, it seems to be a departure from the, the sort of norm. Yeah, in, that was in the very district. Farmhouse. Yeah, I agreed. Yeah, but again, when it when it's stained and it looks something more light, and again, it's hard to see. Like a dark, nice, rich, dark brown, it really pops. All right, and um, the stairs. I know everybody's got an opinion about the stairs on the on the on the front, right? Yes. Um, but if you were to move those over, then that extends your walkway, you know, like eighteen inches. Right. But then it allows it allows for the installation of a handrail should you need it, right? Right. Um, and allows you to plant perhaps in front of the rest of the porch, eliminating the need to extend the stairs or. So that's just another possibility for that front porch configuration. Sure, and just, just to be clear too, uh, from a design perspective, I, I prefer a nice wide walkway. We just kind of design based off historic requests and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm more than happy to widen out that, that front entry as well to meet that, that grander stair, if that's a consideration on, okay. on the front. So, so now we've got, two, we've got two options out there on the table. Right. Okay. Right. It would be a simple point of coordination at this point. Mm -hmm. I, th I think that's fine, yeah. Okay. No Any further questions. No further questions? Okay. Um, can we look at your elevations for the, didn't you have, yeah. At the front, can you um, zoom in to the front elevation, please? Do you have any details or imagery of what you intend to do for the trim between the two windows in your paired group? I do. Historically, that's a, that's a pretty wide. Yeah. Okay. 12 inches. Mm -hmm. And that's your intent for this project? Absolutely. Okay. So I would suggest that something get into the record as sure. you move along, that that gets represented clearly. Okay. And then, can you just talk about the overhangs? I don't remember hearing what the depth of the overhangs were going to be for this project. They were they were changed from twelve to two, or twelve inches so to twenty-four, 24 inches. on this as well. It's a full two foot, and then okay. uh, the the tails themselves are beefed up to two by six. Okay. Versus the two by four that they stand with, come standard. Okay. And then your fascia boards at two by eight. Okay. Susan, yes. I have one more comment, um, you, and, and this is very minor. However, uh, given the scale of the garage, you might want to uh, cut that back to one foot four. On the, on the garage itself? On the garage. Kind of makes sense. I mean, it does have sort of a strange uh, side profile. They, they, tend to, they tend to scale down as you go from primary to accessory, and especially this is a smaller project than the one that you presented before. Right. So you really need to look to historic models for consistency. Sure. But I agree with that, that comment and that suggestion. Yeah, I think anybody, I agree our historian would as well, right? Yeah, it's, a <laughs> it's a matter of the importance. The accessory structure less important than the other. Yeah. Right. OK. OK. Um, that is it for me for comments or questions. So anybody else with any questions? I do, I do have a question. Okay. Um, at your garage elevation, do you intend on one sconce on either side of the garage door or just a single sconce? I intend on two. OK. And then at the front elevation, um, will you have any lighting on the front of the home uh, on the main, main structure? On the, fr uh, on the front, yeah, so we do it's hard to see. It's hard to see in this picture. We do a single sconce to the right of the door, and then we have uh, recessed can lighting in the in the port ceiling. Great. Yep. Thank you. No problem. This is the this is the light we intend to use. The carriage light we intend to use on the f next to the front door and on the side of the garage. Something very similar to that. Any other questions for the applicant? So at this time, we'll go ahead and close that portion of the hearing. And you have five minutes for rebuttal for any additional comments or items that you'd like to enter into the record. I don't think so. Um, again, just we just try to somewhat I mimic mean, what we've already done, try to hit all, all the most important points uh, I thought you guys might, uh, might take a liking to. And again, I'm open for discussion on this couple of things. Um, I want to work with you and do something nice. 
I've been building in this neighborhood for seven years, so I'm very vested in that. I care about the product that we put out uh, and the historical accuracy of it, so. Thank you. Okay, so we'll go ahead and close the public hearing and the commissioners will now discuss the case. So, um, can we talk about the driveway first and whomever would like to start with their thoughts? The driveway? Yes. I think it needs to line up. I would like to see it line up, but I don't know. Commissioner Sutton, can you please, really Commissioner right Sutton, can you please turn, turn your, your mic on? on. Um, I would like to see it line up, be a nice straight shot. But the way the, way the city of Tampa deals with their, their, uh, their aprons and their uh, mm -hmm. uh, right-of-ways, mm -hmm. I don't think they're going to budge. Hmm. I think yeah, this is a given. Transportation has become st stiffer in that regard in the last, probably the last decade, I think. Oh, yeah, easily. Yeah, easily. Um, I mean, if it, wasn't exist, if it wasn't an existing throat already, I can see how you can make an argument with, uh, or a point uh, uh, with tr the uh, traffic and, and the roadway people and say, this is what I got, you know, let me work with it. But uh, being an all brand new installation like this, I don't see them budging. Could are, you? are we okay with a driveway that's got a little... One, one sec. Can you show the original location of, of it on your site plan? Oh, look at that. Aren't yeah, you? Well, this is 506, these robles, and it just looks terrible. It's not really functional. I mean, you back out of that driveway, you know, so that's my goal, too, to get it straight. Sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry? We closed the public hearing. You closed the public hearing. Yes, I'm sorry. But you can look at that. But can you please put the site plan up? Yeah. Thank you. No more, <laughs> no more questions for you, Ray. So um, if, if we look at the photo essay component that we have on file, there was an existing driveway. And from based on what we were told here tonight, the intent is to take that out so they can move it over. And you can see on the site plan the ghost of where it is currently. And that would be very difficult to align that to a new driveway to the mm -hmm. site. And I think the fact that he's, he, they, they have moved that drive as far over as they possibly can per current transportation requirements. Um, I do want to go back to the question or the discussion point about how close should that ribbon be to the actual structure. Mm. Having parked in many different historic districts throughout this country, there have been issues mm -hmm both with large and small cars about how close they are to the buildings just driving in mm -hmm. and indeed if you have cars stacked because here in Tampa we are required to have two spaces for our homes and then an additional for a visitor off the street on our properties so imagine if you had cars stacked and people are getting out how how difficult it would be for the driver's side to do so. So I do think that there there is um, truly a an issue here both from that and then the alignment of the curb cut. Um, I think he's going in the right direction but maybe there is a process that needs to happen with, with some input with staff about and, and that includes transportation how best to get cars into the site. Um, and of course, they're saving as many trees as they can, so that adds to that problem, right? I agree. There needs to be a buffer in between those ribbons and the house. At least for some portion mm -hmm. of it, so that it's usable. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you could still, I mean, I think it's going to be tight anyways getting back there um, with however many trees they're keeping, but um, allowing but some usability. Many of those trees are coming out. It, it does look like it, at least on the east side. Yes, because I see the axes. Mm -hmm. if, they're all, if they're all coming out, then since we're already making a job with our apron and entry driveway, there's no reason why we could not, if you will, extend that job to give that ribbon driveway more space between it and and the dwelling itself. And the dwelling, I agree. And then I think it's another... Almost, it's almost like you'd want to line it up to that uh, uh, that sidewall of the garage. The east, the east, and that was going to be another touch point, I think, is when you get to the, mm -hmm. the garage, how much of that is actually usable apron space. Because if you look at the depth of a car, and 
moving to the left side of that mm-hmm. drive to get to the other side of the of that space say that you're putting another car there if you did that it would be difficult to do that uh, yeah i would be driving in the grass <laughs> yeah to get yeah. back there with my vehicle yeah um, yeah now the other side of that is the functional side of this is the water coming off that gable roof and it's going to come down and splash off of that back off onto your house. right back onto the house yeah. from now until the end of time yeah um so there's a there's a functional commissioner issue. myers um is it possible to mirror this site plan and Close put the side. garage on the opposite yeah, side? We, we can't ask any more questions of the applicant. Okay. We can only. Okay, I'm, I, I will ask you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, do we? I don't see any. I don't see any. Uh, are we? Requ- is the uh, owner required to use the existing entrance to his to his uh, lot? Or can that be done new? I, I, you do not have, this is not a historic element. And even if this was a contributing structure, typically the, the original curb cut is not set in stone if transportation comes back and says it's not feasible. Mm-hmm. Can staff. Would you like staff to add to that? Can we open questioning back up? We, we can. We can make a motion. Right? With the motion, Kamaria pettis Mackle from the city attorney's office, with the motion, you can open the public hearing for, <clears throat> excuse me, for staff and the applicant to um, provide additional information if necessary. Okay. But that's by motion. Okay. One sec. I want to see if staff wants to add to that. Would staff like to add to the... Question regarding the existing driveway. I move to reopen the public hearing. I'll second the motion. So, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Say aye. Those opposed? Say nay. Uh, Dennis Fernandez, uh, Architects Review, Historic Preservation Manager. Um, I believe the mirroring question that came up during your discussion, the tree uh, that's in the uh, lower left corner of the site plan, I believe, is affecting the ability to place the driveway there as well. But Ron and I were talking about potentially about an administrative solution that may be able to um, accommodate some additional space. We would need to discuss that with the transportation division. We're pretty confident that we can work through it if it's just delegated to us to to work through. Um, In in regards to the entire driveway issue coming onto the site and then alignment Extending back down through the side of the, the, the west uh, east side of the house okay so i i i think we can uh get there uh we just need some time and the right people in the room okay so. i Absolutely. have a question kind of backing up to that one then can it, you at the administrative level shift the house do you have any room there on the bear as far as setbacks go that's part of the um solution that we're considering um, but once again, there's processes uh, that need to be uh, checked off on that. I believe the house immediately to the east of it, that's exactly what happened there, is that there was a, uh, there was a pretty large um, obstacle with that particular driveway, and there was some adjustment to try to minimize it, although it's still pretty prominent in the, in the front so of the house. So can you tell us tonight what that leeway is that you can do at the staff level, rather than him having to go in front of variance? Uh, it's not going to be a variance. It would be it would be probably a design exception process, okay. and it would be administrative. So um, we, we, I don't think we I would want to lead them to a variance process. It's going to be a site plan adjustment in okay, coordination. That's, that's why I'm asking. With, yeah, in coordination with the zoning division and, and the transportation. So department. in regards to our motion, should we make a motion in favor of moving forward or? Um, we would have to add some language in there about a design exception process. Pettis Mackle from the city attorney's office. That would be a decision for this applicant on whether or not he would want to go through that design exception mm-hmm. process. Again, I would just leave that the uh, the question about the the apron or and the driveway to staff for staff to work with the applicant about that. 
And then they would put it back in front of us if it needs to come back. Is that correct, that you would bring it back to us if there was a design exception? But you don't, that, that's an administrative process, not through the um, no. ARC. No, but what we can ask for is for coordination for whatever personal reasons we need uh, with respect to the driveway, its entrance, and, uh, uh, and the apron lo uh, locations. So my question would be for the owner then, would you be willing if we were to make a motion that got this approved tonight, would you be willing to work with staff oh, sure, to I'll, make that move? Oh, of course. And just as an add, I, I, per transportation, I can get up to a foot away from the property line. But the more I move the driveway, the more the issue with the... Well, I'm, I'm looking at the move going the other direction. Moving the house. The house going the other direction. Sure, yeah, if, if that's possible, absolutely. I, I was told the variance for process would be required, but if they're going to waive that. And that's why I'm asking. I've I'm done asking plenty of design exceptions, so I'm, I'm fine with that if that's what we can do. I believe that's, you know, the process. If it was going to be anything uh, greater than that, it would have to come back to you. Mm -hmm. so. That's what I meant. I'm completely confused. Sorry, I'm, I'm it, so thrown so here because I thought we were talking about just the driveway alignment and the east side. Now it sounds like the entire project could be moved to the west outside outside the required setbacks there's, at this there's point. There's possibly an administrative process that would allow for a 12 foot uh, uh, adjustment to the east uh, to the west property line okay. to allow for additional when you're dealing with the driveway placement. Um, so that's uh, what I, I'm thinking would uh, accomplish a foot between a foot additional space between the edge of the driveway and the existing uh, east elevation of the property. Mm -hmm. um, so it would be just a slight uh, positioning of the of the primary structure. The accessory structure would most likely remain in the same place, and we would try to limit that jog uh, in the. Um, the ribbon to try to keep that as much in alignment as we could. I un I understand that, but my my confusion here is that it sounds like it would be outside the bounds of the required setbacks. So typically we see that as a variance request. If, so then if it, if it, it goes done, down that route, it does come back to us. Right. If it can be done administratively, we would look at it. If you're in support of it, if if, if yeah. you prefer variance, then um, that's a different process, and I think we would need to have that discussion with the owner. What is that job dimension? Uh, way less than the one next door. The actual dimension of it? Is it less than 12 inches? It's, it's probably within 12 inches. Now, as it sits now. So, so just to be clear, I, I chopped off the portico share to avoid the variance process. So I don't want to go on that route. Yeah. Um, right. I'm okay. Again, if we can get a, a waiver to, to shorten the, the flare to a foot or two, I think that will kick it over. But then again, we still have the issue of it touching the house. Um, I mean, I'm open to anything that does not there, require. There's a reason I'm asking for these specific dimensions yeah. so that I can, we can talk them up. Sure, yeah, I mean, it's less than 12 now. inches, okay. the, way, the way it's shown here now. Okay. Any other questions for the applicant before we close this again? <laughs> Before you um, close the hearing, um, can you please allow the applicant, just if he has any final rebuttal from every, any, everything yeah. that was discussed about? Sure, absolutely. Um, so just to clarify too and add some more information, it's a five foot, we went from a six to a five foot flare, um, just to try to straighten it out. I, I've seen flares, new construction, less than that, so that may be an avenue, but talking with you guys here today, I do, I would prefer a buffer of some kind between the house and the driveway. Um, again, I'm okay going the, the, the design exception route if that's possible. The variance, I'd rather just somehow try to deal with with that jog and still push the driveway over at least a foot to give it a, a buffer area. Mm -hmm. Okay. Route. Thank you. We'll go ahead and close this <laughs> public hearing once again and continue with the commissioner's review comment period. So. Um, any further discussion on the um, driveway issue at all? Or are we pretty clear with the direction here if we had to? So the reason I was asking those questions was it's, it, sounds, yeah, it sounds like if it's 12 inches or less, staff can work with him to make that administrative decision without him having to go in front of 
or, or ask for a variance. It also sounds like we can get it straight if we shift the entire structure that dimension. Right. So we're achieving what we're trying to achieve here, which is a straight. Right. Drive and, and a more and get it off the house a little bit. Right. A more usable solution. Agreed. Um, any other comments about this particular item? Okay, I think we've beat the dead horse. <laughs> uh, <laughs> any I, other discussion points? We, yeah, the only thing I can add to this is that I think we would be very happy to have as much buffer as we possibly can have under the tightness of the circumstance without having to literally put the screws to everyone. You know, every little inch on either side or whatever would really count to the benefit of, the, of this project and the layout of the site. And it's not our business to dictate how much and where this needs to happen. I think this is a point of negotiation between yourself, uh, staff, and uh, the other folks downtown to, to come up to an amicable solution to give up as much space as we possibly can. The intention here really is to create enough buffer between this driveway and, uh, and its ribbon uh, with respect to the, the, if you will, the side of the house. So there's some elbow wiggle room there. That's the, that's the basic deal here. Um, we do not want to have people having impacts with toy cars, doors, people, yippy dogs, and God knows what else because there's just no more room. A lot of blood in that. Any thoughts on the side staircase? Um, yeah, that would be a second point that I definitely think we should discuss. So I understand why don't you why leave with that? <laughs> yeah, well, I understand why it's there because it, he did have a port to share on his plan that he's obviously built multiple times. Uh, this one doesn't have it. It looks like there's about an 18 inch step up from grade to the top. So I'm not sure you need it anyway. If you wanted to get up there, most people could. Um, I actually think there's a solution staring staring them right in the face. I mean, this is a small house to begin with, and you're trying to do a lot. And um, sometimes editing just does a wonderful thing. Um, I think by readdressing the front stairs and the, and the walls and the walk and how they address one another, um, you're allowing yourself to sort of make this entry condition that, and especially if you were able to move away from the ribbon a little bit, that allows you to have that flow from the side ribbon as well as from the, the front stair right. Um, so I think by renegotiating the, the primary stair at the front and those walls, those welcome walls, I think you'll find a comfortable solution for the future homeowners. And I don't think you need that side because I agree with Commissioner Sutton's comment earlier that it's a really small space and we all love our front porches those of us who have them i don't have one <laughs> uh, but when i go to people's houses and they do it's just lovely to sit there and to give that over to a stair that you really don't need you know and i agree i mean if if you're okay with stepping up 18 inches <laughs> uh, that's an easy that's an easy lift for most of us right so that's right it didn't become an antique Pardon? Until you become an antique. Well, I'm getting there. My knees creak. <laughs> Any other discussion points? I have a, um, are we okay with the um, detail of brackets being decided on site, or is that something that we need approved by staff? Um, we have actually worked, we've worked it in in the past with staff, of, you know, negotiating that out in the field or in the process of the drawing development. So I, I think as long as we make that note, Mm -hmm. that as a they work with staff yeah. as that, a condition. That yeah. the brackets are yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that. It's something that's done It's done in the field all the, all the time. time. Yeah. All the time. And actually that was traditional. I mean, yeah. the historic yeah. method of building, and especially in the arts and crafts stuff. And we also have the benefit here of a, of a builder who, who's done this before. Yeah. Okay, uh, he's demonstrated product. So uh, it's not as if uh, we have an unknown situation on our hands here. The only other comment I have or discussion, I guess, was the, the piers on the side were mentioned, but it looks like the front and rear piers are also fairly close. Um, I think, like, 
we just condition it that generally yeah, the, the whole peers thing, that's are reading. Yeah. The number of and yeah. spacing of right. to be coordinated. Yeah. You start looking at the dimensions. To be more they're appropriate. Every six foot, you know, roughly, yep. uh, which is very close. Mm -hmm. um, and I just want to clarify with our board, with the condition of the welcome walls and the stairs, how do we want that? Like what? Because there were two sort of means of revisiting discussed. Do we just want to sort of like broadly state that it's revisited and approved by staff? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. I, trust I agree with that. I trust that the, the appropriate thing will happen. Perfect. All right. So um, would someone like to make a motion? Yeah. I think we're tagging you again. I move to grant a certificate of appropriateness for the drawings and documents presented at this public hearing in ARC 21-368 for the property located at 504 East Robles Street with the following conditions. Uh, that all brackets are approved by staff. That the piers throughout the whole house are revisited in terms of quantity and rhythm and approved by staff that the front door elevation is updated to reflect the eight foot door discussed today, uh, that the front um, entry welcome walls and steps, including the side steps, are reconsidered and approved by staff, uh, that the accessory structures pitch, roof pitch is updated to match the main structure as well as the accessory structures elevations to be updated to reflect the freeze and shingles discussed today. Um, that the height of the brick columns are lowered to align with the sill height of the windows. Uh, that the overhang at the accessory structure is reduced um, and approved by staff. Um, and that all elevations are updated to reflect the light fixtures as discussed today. And that staff administratively revises the apron and driveway from the street to the garage to achieve a straight driveway and spacing between the ribbon and the main structure. To the extent possible. To the extent possible. Because based upon the finding of fact, the proposed project is consistent with the Tampa Heights design guidelines for the city of Tampa for the following reasons. That the scale, height and width, massing and form are consistent with the guidelines. I will second that motion. All in favor, please state aye and raise your hand. Aye. Oh, I'm aye. sorry, wait. Sorry, before you mm -hmm. ask that question. Do you understand all the conditions and are you okay with them or have any comments about them? Uh, no, I'm good. I understand them. Okay. So all in favor, please state aye and raise your hand. Aye. 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 Opposed? Seeing none, the motion carries, and congratulations. Thank you guys for your time. Good evening, Commissioners. Ron Vila, staff with Historic Preservation. Moving to the next agenda item, which is ARC 21-405 for the address of 307 East Oak Avenue. This is also in the Tampa Heights Historic District. There is a contributing structure on site that dates back to 1917. Uh, the zoning attached to this is RM24. The request is for a certificate of appropriateness for new construction for an addition to the primary structure. They're going to do some modifications to that contributing structure with some site improvements. Moving through the uh, photo presentation, uh, on this uh, request I'm going to start with a Sanborn map. Sanborn map is showing the parcel in question is indicated in the green parcel. It does face Oak Avenue to get a uh, sense of uh, place. You have Palm Avenue to the north. You have Oak uh, that is immediately uh, abutting the uh, front facade. And then you have 7th Avenue to the south. As you go from west to east, you have Florida Avenue. You have Morgan Street. And then you have Jefferson. This is uh, the current uh, overhead shot showing the property in question. Once again, you have Palm Avenue. To the north, the property sits uh, facing Oak Avenue, and then you have 7th Avenue to the south, and from west to east you have Florida Avenue, Morgan, and Jefferson. There is an alley that runs behind uh, the property that runs east to west. Looking at the uh, front facade, you see that they 
portion of the structure has been enclosed over time. It has a uh, non-period uh, canopy over the front. And then you see the condition of the foundation enclosure. Just looking a little closer at the foundation enclosure, how it exists today. This is looking at the uh, west elevation from front to back. See the fireplace here as a point of reference. This is a portion of the porch that was enclosed. Looking at that same elevation from back to front, which is the west elevation. This is a, a non-contributing, uh, non-period structure that abuts the structure to the west that was built prior to this board being in existence. Moving back to the uh, primary structure, this is the uh, east elevation. This is the porch and the front looking towards the rear. Does have a one story uh, portion of the building that engages to a, a two story volume in the rear that was original to the structure. Going back to the front elevation, just kind of capitalizing on some of the elements that are there. You see the, the trim, the historic trim seems to be in place in the proportion of the windows, but the windows themselves have been removed. It does have a, shake, a shingle metal roof associated with the, the facade. This is looking at the abutting structure. This is to the east, which is vacant. Moving around to the rear elevation. This is the lower portion of the rear elevation. Moving up top, you see some of the challenges that exist today. And what was a sleeping porch back in the early 1920s does seem to have the original screened uh, uh, around the windows. Once again, focusing on the lower portion of the rear elevation. The condition of the alley. This is looking at the alley towards the uh, west and then moving around towards the east. Uh, that concludes the photo presentation. Before we get started, Mr. Dobbs needs to be sworn in. Mm -hmm. So Ms. Juzak can swear him in, please. Can you tell Ms. Swearer from the testimony if you go by this evening the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Okay. Good evening. My name is Alan Dobbs, uh, 5502 North Cherokee Avenue. I'm with Florida Design Studio. Um, it's kind of interesting, when I started Florida Design Studio in 2005, my office was right across the street from this house, and I always kind of admired this house, and it looks exactly uh, like it did back in 2005, uh, although the back, obviously, is in uh, bad disrepair. Uh, so uh, my client just recently purchased this property, and what he wants to do is, is add... Uh, some additional square footage in addition to the obvious uh, exterior improvements and also uh, uh, renovating the back. Uh, we were going to do a, a detached garage, but we removed that from the petition because we realized since it has an RM uh, zoning classification, uh, the setbacks for those accessory structures are 20 feet, so we couldn't do it. So we pulled that out, and we're going to come back to the board uh, for this, for that. Um, but anyway, so I will just start with the, the site plan. And first off, the house is centered on the property, which is 50 foot wide, and it's about 10 feet on either side. But in the back, on this side, it bumps out. So what we're doing is we're bumping it out this side, which you'll see in the floor plans why we're doing that. Uh, but this is the two-story uh, portion across the um, back. And then there's a simple uh, gable, a ridge, and a front-facing ga gable. Um, and then, so we're going to be building out space within the attic, which is why we have the dormers. And also, you'll see some skylights or roof windows. Um, additional living space on the back here. We might have to end up rebuilding this, but if we do, we're going to try and rebuild it back in kind. Um, and then obvious, and then a one-story porch across the back. Uh, the site improvements are uh, vehicular access off the alley because there's no way to, to have it from the front. And, mo and along Oak, there really aren't any other properties that have vehicular access from Oak. It's all from the uh, alley. And um, so I'm going to go through just a few pictures um, because I'll, re I'll refer to certain 
parts of this, so just keep it in your memory when I go through the elevations. But uh, you know, some of the the details are really great on this house, like these welcome walls and the concrete steps. Uh, that's going to be removed, and we're going to do a new foundation closure, and I have a detail for that. Um, the, the columns and the, and the siding around the front porch. The original front porch was enclosed, and um, part of it. And so this is the part that was enclosed. They actually did a different kind of siding. It's like a drop lap siding, but the original columns are there, and they're in good condition. And then the windows and the, the casing and trim are uh, of the period, but obviously there's aluminum windows, so those will be uh, replaced. And, and again, the foundation uh, enclosure there. Um, here's, a, here's a view from the other corner. Um, the porch is screened in, and my client currently is planning on keeping it screened in. The wood is all in pretty good shape. This railing is in pretty good shape. They just have plywood over it uh, for security. And then also that metal awning uh, will be the very first thing to go. I'm surprised my client hasn't already done it. <laughs> um, so this is actually the inside of the porch. So you can see the plywood. So again, you see the column and the detail and the beadboard. Um, we're replicating that on the back porch as far as the ceiling treatment and the, and the ceiling to uh, beam trim. And then uh, looking towards, this is where the entry steps are right here. Um, this is the part that was enclosed and you see that different siding is consistent and was taken all the way to the inside. And uh, so there's currently no screen door, but you'll see in the elevations, we're gonna rebuild the screen door there. Here's another view. Um, this shows the original window, typically the front facing window on the, um, these homes are larger than the windows on the side, which is the case here, but you can see it was replaced with the aluminum window. Um, the other windows are like this. Again, all the original casing and trim is there. Typical four and a half inch wide casing uh, on the sides and the head, a drip cap, and then you have a, uh, like a three quarter to an inch overhang at these four corners. Um, the siding, is, we're going to replicate the siding on all the uh, on the new work. Um, on the back, obviously, it's in very bad shape, but I wanted to kind of point out this gable end vent because we're going to replicate that on the other side. <clears throat> and then I'm sure y'all are curious what the inside of that back looks like. Um, this is the current access. Obviously, it's not a code compliant stair. It was actually kind of scary going up it. The upstairs is pretty incredible. <clears throat> It has um, it has the windows that kind of step up to along the um, the roof uh, rake, um, and it's just a band of windows that go all the way around. And then you have the horizontal wood below. And then when you look the other way, um, same thing. <clears throat> this doesn't stick out as far as the other side. And then a small sink. And then there's a, a door to the attic there. So uh, one last thing I'll just quote, point, point out in the site is I decided to move the air conditioning from over here to over here because this has the potential to be more of a public side of the house with the vehicular parking here. Uh, this is where the kitchen window is, so it seemed like it's a little uh, less, uh, it's a little more obscure back here and, and hidden. Um, so looking at the floor plans. Um, let me zoom out here. So this is existing floor plan. So this is just going to all be gutted back here. This shows the extent of the addition. So this will all be two stories here. And this is where we're going to do the porch. And then there's some uh, uh, miscellaneous uh, modifications on the interior of the house that doesn't affect the exterior. Um, and I'm going through the plans because it kind of explains why the elevations are the way they are as far as window placement and things like that. Um, so, yeah, the kitchen is redone here. So this becomes all sort of utilitarian kind of space. Uh, this is going to be the master bedroom. So we created kind of elaborate master uh, bath and closet area in this portion. Um, 
we sort of tucked in a water closet here, which is why we added a window there in the elevation. Um, this becomes like a mud room. The stairs go around and up and over, so you have a little half bath or powder bath there. Uh, you have some little storage cubbies and washer and dryer and all that kind of stuff. Um, there'll be storage underneath the steps, and then anybody with a pet will be nice. They'll be glad to hear there's a little pet room underneath the stairs there. Um, and then the porch on the back. It's just a very simple eight foot deep porch. It doesn't go the full width of the house. Um, th this offset here was replicated on this side, but then we stepped back in the porch. And the porch we did with the hip roof because typically uh, these additive type porches have a hip roof and also you, you avoid problems with the high ridge on these windows up here. Um, you can see in this drawing, I'll zoom in a little bit, uh, the window placement um, is, these are all the existing windows, but here with the addition, um, just for cost and to sort of differentiate uh, new from ex existing, we're just doing a single window on the front and back, which will be the same size as these, and then we'll do a pair of windows, and you'll see how that kind of works uh, in the elevation. Uh, the real challenge on this house was trying to create living space within the attic, because although you can stand up in the attic, the height, head height is pretty limited. So we did um, relatively narrow dormers because the wider they get, the higher the, the ridge gets. And we wanted to keep the ridge of the dormers lower than the main ridge of the house. So basically we have seven foot ceilings up here. So it actually lays out pretty nice. You have a bathroom here and then you have kind of open space here. This could be a bedroom. And then this is the area where we um, have uh, the skylight, so they're kind of concealed between the dormers. Uh, the reason we didn't do a dormer on this side is because there's a, a chimney right there, and uh, but we want so the majority of the addition is on the back. So anything forward of that we kept very minimal, but even so, it's all kept back from the front to respect the original uh, look of the house from the front. So this is what I was talking about on, on the front of the house. Um, the original screen door, we're building that back. We're going to be doing the foundation screen enclosure here. Uh, all this is way back. It's kind of screened, but it doesn't look as screened as it should be on this drawing. On the side of the house, um, that's the window that goes away that's by the stairs on the inside. And then when you look at the... Uh, the new elevation, you see the porch here, and it, the roof comes down. I put a little person in there for scale, so you can see that roof comes in below that water table or sill line. This window gets filled in, um, and then a new window gets added, but it's a, a lower height. It's just a six foot eight. And then you can kind of see the dormers. The dormers are, again, kept narrow and to keep them minimized, and also because of the ceiling height issue, but uh, you can see the um, the roof windows or skylights. And then the windows themselves, they're just a, a uh, there's no divided lights. The house has um, single undivided lights, except this back here has divided lights, which we're gonna replicate on the addition, but everything else is just uh, no divided lights. And it's a casement window because, again, uh, that's the smallest window where you can have egress if you have a casement. Once you go to a double or single hung, you have to have a bigger uh, window. So on the other side, it's pretty similar, except, um, except we don't have that uh, second dormer. And then I mistakenly, um, this window right here technically goes away and I accidentally left in here so there'd be no window here. And then those are the two new uh, paired windows. The, the, uh, the, mullion, or, yeah, the mullion between them will be the same as the the ones that are existing and then you see the single dormer um, all the all the foundation screen screen enclosure that's pretty much all the way around the building between the uh, the existing brick piers on the back you see the existing elevation and then um, it's very it's a very I wish I would have brought a picture it's a very odd connection how this roof goes up and joins in this um, on the side but we resolved that by bumping it out so now it's the full width so you can see that you have all the original windows 
and then you have the single window that's set or centered in the addition. Again, that sort of goes back to differentiate new from existing, but also not, um, you know, having the band of windows go completely around the building. The uh, this this uh, pretty basic. It just shows the existing uh, roof, which is basically two by four rafters and uh, two by six uh, ceiling joists. And then what we're doing is we're having to bump the the ceiling joist or sister on uh, new floor joist um, onto the side of the ceiling joist and then have these cripple walls in here and then uh, this this particular this is a section that kind of cuts through two areas this cuts through the um, obviously the skylight and then this cuts through the the roof uh, just before the dormer um, I do have some a more detailed drawing I'm going to kind of zoom in so it's pretty good here so and that's good okay so um, yeah, so just going from the top down, um, you know, on the gable end, you know, you have the, the, uh, the beadboard, uh, tongue and groove to match the existing, uh, two by six barge rafter um, on, the, on the dormer, and then you have the full height window right here. I have the window details here. And then as far as, I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit. And then this is an interesting little detail because I've done quite a few attic build-outs. Um, with the plaster, you have the plaster keys in the ceiling. You know, you don't want to mess with those because if you break them off, the plaster comes down. So what we do is, is right here, we put a, a three-quarter inch, um, one, uh, basically a one by four, and then the, the new joists sit on top of that. Uh, another interesting thing is when they built these houses, they would take the straightest side of the board uh, or ceiling joists and put that down because that's your finished ceiling. So a lot of times in the attics, the, uh, the top of those ceiling joists are like all over the place. And plus they're not strong enough to support additional floor load. So by sistering on it like a two by 10 in this case, it levels it all out. And then we're pulling the dormer back. So that allows us to run some air conditioning duct work if we need to there, uh, two by four frame walls here. So this is through the, through the dormer. And then this is through the skylight. And one of the things as far as the location of this wall is um, when you have a sloped ceiling, uh, or ceiling, the minimum uh, flat ceiling is seven feet per the Florida Building Code. You're allowed to go less than that. It's four foot six if it's a sloped ceiling. So that's why we set this at four foot six. So that's all technically habitable space. And then we have a little condition uh, attic or storage area here and then the the uh, skylight is a it's not a curb mounted it's a deck mounted so it doesn't stick up as high above the roof plane and again it's very uh, low profile it's a nice way to get light without having to add more than you have to to the roof okay so this is, um, I had to rearrange the drawings a little bit from what y'all received, um, just to get everything to fit with the new drawings that I did. But this is basically the same section. So uh, this is a section through the addition in the back with the porch. So, you know, we have the two by six uh, rafter tails, similar to the existing with the soffit uh, to match the existing. And then we have the window, uh, wood windows. And then we have the sill that, um, I should probably zoom in some more so we can see a little bit more detail. And then, um, you know, and then the wood floor. We're going to drop the ceiling here because we have um, uh, some issues with the existing uh, floor up here. But also, we're going to um, may need that space to run air conditioning. Uh, but it also matches up with the uh, with the back porch. And speaking of the back porch, I'll see if I can skip this over a little bit. So, same detail as the uh, as the upper roof, except it's a lower pitch. Uh, four, four and four and twelve, and then it has a, a wrapped or clad beam, and then it has a column. Uh, it's just a square uh, manufactured wood box column that has a little detail at the top, and then a nice simple detail at the bottom, and then a railing, thirty-six inch high guardrail because um, because it's we're higher than uh, thirty inches, but it'll be similar to the front, and then uh, and then you have the the brick pier, 
and then the uh, foundation screen closure, which I'll show you detail that in a minute. Um, this is a section, kind of a gable section at the at the stairs. So basically, you have this. Um, I forgot to mention on the dormer, the overhangs are one foot six, and on the gable they're one foot six. On the addition in the back, it's um, it's one it's two feet everywhere. Um, so we wanted. We felt, I felt the dormers, because they're a smaller scaled element, a less overhang, uh, look better proportionally. Um, but anyway, so this is basically the same details, except we'll have a, a vent uh, to match existing up here on the cable end. Um, and then here, um, I had to work out the geometry of the stairs. It's a little tricky, but um, but this is the last flight that goes up. There's a, This is at a landing, and then you go on up. And then this, oops, I my dimensions messed up, but this is the floor and the ceiling, and then this is the seven foot high ceiling at the uh, at the water closet or the um, powder bath. And then this uh, detail here is the, it's the foundation screen. So it's basically just vertical pickets with, with the picture, with the, um, with the two inch um, frame, a three and a half inch frame. Wait, I'm sorry, it's, um, one by two pickets, three and a half inches on center. Oh, I didn't, yeah, this is like two and a half inches, this frame here, which is typical. And then the, the, um, the railings and the pickets um, are all noted there. Um, so going through some of the, oh, and then the last thing is the window details. Um, so uh, typical wood window type detail, you have the, um, you know, the large sill, and then you have where the siding comes up, you have a, a cord around underneath it to kind of close that gap. Uh, typical sill and stool on the inside. And then the head of the window is, um, is, is, is four, and a, it basically an uh, inch and a half by four and a half inch with a drip cap. The interior trim may not be this, it may be something different, a little bit more simple. And then the jam is similar to the head. This is the exterior side here, so that's a um, inch and a half by, actually it should be four and a half, but um, again, we're gonna max the uh, existing. So I'm gonna go through some of the um, finished materials now. Um, so the first thing is, the shingles, we're just gonna do, we, we talked about maybe doing a metal roof or something like that, but uh, my client decided that uh, just for budget reasons, we're gonna go with the dimensional asphalt shingles. So that's pretty typical, you know, in, in the neighborhood, uh, used on a lot of projects. Um, and then the, uh, on the, and this is one of the staff comments was, we have uh, sand set pavers for the, uh, for the parking area in the back and we're just going to do this uh, basket weave pattern with this border which is very simple except for we have a, do have a concrete apron between the property line and where the edge of the pavement will be the so there's this company called southern pine inspection bureau they're the ones that have all the wood profiles that were used back in the 20s and this is the actual profile that we're using it's uh number 115. It's actually a single one by six that's profiled to look like a double lap. And so that's what we're using. Um, North Rum Lumber is where everybody gets their materials from and they, and they keep this in stock. The, the doors in the back, uh, we have a pair of French doors, uh, single light. Um, I presented this door before to the, um, this board. It's a great door. It's it's not wood. It's it's actually a like a PVC door, but its its details and its proportions are great. Um, it has uh, the the glazing stop, uh, very similar to the way the older doors are. You can't really see it in the picture, but there's a very fine grain to it, but not heavy, so it looks a lot like wood when it's painted. And I found this hardware, which I think you know a lot of the houses in Tampa Heights, you know, were, were a lot older than the houses in Seminole Heights and so this lock I thought was very typical of what would have been around at that time very simple one plate with the with the deadbolt not not two separate elements there and not the long vertical handle 
the skylights. Um, these are just a couple. Um, hold on. So there's a lot of options on skylights, but they basically all are the same frame. You can get them solar powered, fixed, um, manually vented. Um, but you know, this is the kind of space that we're going to be having, you know, in this house. So it's a usable space, but it's a very cool um, sort of space. Um, and then uh, this sort of shows a couple of them in the act. This, this particular uh, one has blinds. And then you can also do another option where it's a true roof window where it opens up all the way. And I've actually used a similar product here where we had to have the window for egress, but that's not the case here. So, but they're, um, but it's a great way to, a great solution to get light into a attic that you're building out. Um, so the window, I didn't bring any literature on the window, but I brought a wood window sample. Uh, this is by Sierra Pacific. Um, I'm going to set it up by Ron and just talk about a few things. Ron's helped me before with this. So just a, a couple things with the wood window, uh, the mullions, uh, we aren't using this side, sides of muttons rather. Uh, but we will have simulated divided lights, but they'll be wider because the ones on the house are actually about an inch and a quarter because that's typically the way they were when they were just like the two over two like that. But the proportions are really important. The proportions of the styles and the rails, and you have this heavy bottom rail here. So, uh, and it's all wood, but then it does have the vinyl stand liner, which is pretty much all the windows now. And then uh, the the profile painting, how it's sort of set back and everything, and then we, we'll have an inch and a half trim. The last thing is lighting. I didn't really show any lighting on the elevations, but we're, we we're have a provision for uh, if we're going to use wall lighting, we're going to use the scots like this, and then we'll have the sort of the matching uh, light, ceiling light to go with it um, on the porch. So I'm going to put back the site plan. Because um, I know that's the thing you'll like to talk about first. Um, and then I'm going to zoom into this area on the alley because I forgot to mention about that. So this shows where the um, concrete apron is, and there'll be a score there, and then this will all be the concrete pavers, and then again you can see where the accessory building is going to go, and we're planning for having a side entry, so all the dimensions that are noted here will work for that sort of footprint in the future. So, um, so with that I conclude my presentation. Thank you. Thank you. We'll move on to the staff report. Good evening, Commissioner Ron Vila, staff with Historic Preservation. Just to remind you, the uh, request for the certificate of appropriateness was for new construction in addition to the primary structure with some modifications to the contributing structure with site improvements. Staff's finding that this application is consistent with the Tampa Heights design guidelines. Um, I'll be here to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. So um, we'll open this up to public comment. Is there anyone present who would like to speak for or against the project? Seeing none, I see the same happy faces. Um, we'll go ahead and close that portion of the, of the hearing and um, allow commissioners to ask questions. We'll start with Commissioner Myers. Uh, thank you for the uh, very detailed uh, presentation, Mr. Doms. Um, thank you. The Sierra Pacific window will be used for all of the windows. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. And if we do, and I, I need to uh, qualify that, if we go with anything different, you know, then we will definitely, you know, work with staff on that. But it's it's tricky, you know, with wood windows and getting ones to meet impact and stuff. And then so that's, uh, but yes, that is that is what we're presenting here at the Sierra Pacific for all the. Uh, for all the window replacements and all the new windows. 
Okay, and will all, will all of those be double hung or? Uh, yes, I think a lot of the windows actually, and I didn't mention this in my presentation, I think as rough as that rear addition looks, the windows are actually in pretty good shape. You know, I poked at them a lot and there wasn't mm -hmm. a whole lot of dry wood. Uh, so I don't know if we can salvage some of them, you know, but uh, definitely all the ones on the house um, will be um, replaced with the Sierra Pacific. The, and, the sashes, not the trim. Mm -hmm. And is it your intent to replace all of the exterior siding or? No, no, no. We're, no, all the, all the siding is going to remain as it is. You know, we're just going to, um, you know, restore it. Uh, but all the new siding is going to match the existing siding, which is in that profile that I presented. Okay. okay. I, one, one could argue that maybe you could use the wider siding um, that, you, that was used on the front on the on the addition, just to differentiate it. But yeah, we could. It's it's uh, that's the only area that it's used, and it was used to enclose the front porch, mm -hmm. whereas everything else is sort of like adding on to the mass of the house. So I, I thought the language was a little more consistent okay. if we kept that, that siding. All right, thank you. Okay. That's a good answer. No further questions. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner I have no questions. Thank you. Commissioner Kalin, any questions? You mentioned the scow eyes are not for egress. Correct. Uh, what is your egress? It's those casement windows, and I, I had mentioned that's why we we're using casement windows on the dormers, because a casement window is the smallest window you can use to still meet egress. Okay, is, that, is that really the main purpose for these dormers, so you can get egress? No, the dormers are to, to uh, create usable uh, space in the attic. Uh, we could have done like a shed dormer, uh, but it would have to be a really low pitched roof and it would be a fairly dominant feature on either side of the house. And also it's a, a much bigger uh, span that you have to do for a header when you do a, a shed dormer. And I've, I've done a house similar to this where we did shed dormers, but this one we're really trying to minimize, uh, you know, how much we're modifying the existing uh, roof on the house. That's all I have for now. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Sutton. Mr. Dobbs, I would like to uh, have an opportunity to discuss with you uh, some of your concepts respecting uh, that second, the existing and expanded second story sleeping porch. Now I can understand uh, why we have the bump out, and I can understand how that fixes a number of problems, where roofs go, how uh, building elements terminate, the imposition of a new and actually functioning stair. But the question I have is, in the, in the sense that you have this addition going on to that second story, is there a missed opportunity? Because the existing um, sleeping porch, I think has perhaps the most significant feature for this dwelling in the way that those existing windows wrap all the way around and cascade down both sides of that, um, of that hip, uh, of that roof. And the question I have for you is, have you explored or uh, taken a look at the complete extension and run of those Ribbit, uh, that section of ribbon window, if you want to call it, from the existing into the addition portion of this. Because I see that uh, there are elements here uh, where it, it's broken in terms of the continuity of the windows. Have you looked at, 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 at bringing that continuity into your stair addition? Um. Yes, we did. Uh, as, as you know, you know, whenever you're at a second floor or do a two-story house, one of the first things you have to work out is the stairs because the geometry is very finite and it affects you know, the layout of the first and second floor. So that's what we looked at first was, how, was where we can put the stairs. Could we put them anywhere else except that 
uh, back porch. Um, and there really wasn't anywhere we could do it, so that's why we ended up doing it where we did. And then that allowed room to still have a mud room and also a, a nice master bath. So those are kind of the functional requirements. Uh, the, the aesthetic uh, things that you're talking about on the exterior elevations, um, it's a very odd detail in the back. I, I put up the, the existing elevation of the uh, west side, but Ron, I don't know if, if you um, had a picture of that side. I think there was a picture. Uh, yeah, because it showed the window missing on that side. It's the, the back west side, I don't know if that's something you could pull up. But while, while he's doing that, oh, okay, oh, he's going through it now, okay. Yeah, so um, if you look at that uh, bar drafter that goes up where it intersects the house, you know, where, where Ron has mm -hmm. that, uh, it actually stops. There's only like an inch or so gap between that and the window. It's, it's a very, very odd um, juxtaposition. And, um, you know, so I thought by bumping that out, it solves the problem of where to put the stairs but also it fixes that, uh, that situation. I think what uh, the other concern that you had was, and maybe we can go back to the, is this a wolf or Elmo? Just press Doc now up here. S excuse me? Doc, yes. Oh, yeah, okay. okay. Yeah, so what you were saying was about, you know, the, the tricky thing is, so there's a rhythm of four windows and a rhythm of four windows then I could have done a rhythm of three windows, but it, it looked odd, you know. So I thought, well, you know, we'll do just one window in the field of, of siding. Um, and, then on, and then I figured since we have the field of siding there, then that would sort of turn the corner and we'd have a little bit of field of siding there and then we'd have the double window. Um, and I think that's the, that, that was the tricky thing is because the, the house goes from here to about here, so so it's the house and this part's not centered, but there's local symmetry with this part right here with the four windows and the four windows. Mm -hmm. So so that was just the way we kind of uh, reconciled that by uh, doing it a, a little bit different like that. But the overall, I think the important thing is the overall form, you know, being consistent, um, and then these these uh, two sides being being similar. Did well, I see, did I see no. things still a little bit on the different side still? Um, because you are spending a great deal of time and energy uh, reconstructing this entire second level and its uh, adjacent attics, including replacement of windows. So uh, making adjustments as an example, I understand the rhythm of four and four and you're left with a space of mm -hmm. three but there's nothing to stop you from rearranging these, this, this, this rhythm by doing a rhythm of four on each side, each end with a center of a rhythm of three, mm -hmm. <coughs> preserving your symmetry, and then also preserving the entirety of, 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 of the window wrap. Mm -hmm. Because part of the window wrap that I thought was very interesting is how it not only just goes along the side, but how it marries itself into the ends and then cascades down that roof. I think it's just a marvelous thing. I, and I agree with what you're saying, and I think that would look great across the back for a much more balanced, sort of symmetrical look across the entire uh, uh, facade. Um, but, you know, look, considering the secretary standards, you know, I talk to my clients on these projects about degrees of intervention, and you always sort of start with the least invasive thing, leave as much existing as you possibly can, and that's what we're doing here. We want to leave that part of the building alone and not alter it in any more than we absolutely have to. But I can tell you this, if we get into it and that whole addition has to be sort of rebuilt, then what I would do is I would, uh, obviously I'd have to be talking to uh, staff, you know, and then we could, we could look at uh, maybe doing a different window configuration because then you know, the original's gone, so we don't have to uh, try and keep it, but that's where we're starting, is trying to keep as much of the original you know, as possible. So I'd be happy with the condition being that maybe we 
we look at the, the uh, spacing or rhythm configuration of the windows, the second floor windows of that uh, addition in the back. Because I can see that because you're already altering the massing without any break point. Right, we're, we're adding to it, but we're leaving all the existing as much as we can that's mm -hmm. there. But, okay, I know it's a, it's a, it's a, it's touchy a tricky, thing. delicate thing, yeah. That's all I have for the moment. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Boyd? I have no um, I want to go back to your site plan. Can you show us if any um, fence locations and gates? And if you could zoom um, out so we can see the yeah. full property, please. Thank you. Can you pull that? Yeah, yeah so whatever fences that are there now are going to remain unaltered we uh we don't have any fencing can you point those possible. out if they do exist because i can't uh, oh um yeah i probably <laughs> need to zoom in um it's mostly like uh chain link fences i think uh across the back um and well you can see let me zoom in a little bit more um you can kind of see a little bit you know right here and then let me move forward but, and then there's, yeah, and then you see the fences right here. Um, okay. But again, yeah, that, that was, uh, we were going to address that when we were gonna do the accessory building, but once we realized we're not gonna do the accessory building as part of this petition, we decided to leave out uh, fences. So how will you address screening the AC unit? If that's well, a chain link fence, then? You're, you're right, and that, that's, that's part of, I think I had kind of mentioned that, that it was out kind of out here a little bit more within the public realm, especially since, you know, you'll have the parking here. Well, actually, can you zoom out again oh, for the whole yeah. property? Yeah, sorry. So yeah. correct me if I'm wrong, but to the, the upward portion of the plan, that is your primary entry, is that not? So, yeah, this is the front entrance. So that's your that's your primary street facade. It is, right. So even though the AC unit is pushed back, there is still that argument that it would be visible, even through a chain link fence. And through the trees, too. Yeah. Um, yeah, if there's concerns for that, I would be happy with uh, the board putting a condition about screening, okay. coming up with the screening for the AC. Okay. Um, but that's why we moved it, just to, for that reason. But, okay. All right. Um, I do not have any other questions for you. Any other questions or comments for the applicant? Mr. Myers? One quick question, Mr. Dobbs. Um, and this is, this is outside of our purview, but I see from your, uh, from your drawings that you, you're taking up all of the old flooring, right? And then you're, you're putting something called, you're putting sturdy floor underneath it, right? Oh. Is that? Well, the attic doesn't Come on, have. Come Pettis Knuckle from the city attorney's office. What goes on inside? We can't. We can't ask any questions okay. or make comments okay. about All it. All right. You can contact me outside this board. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> After approval. No. Okay. Thank you for oh, clarifying that. All right. Seeing no other questions or comments, we'll go ahead and give you five minutes for rebuttal for an opportunity to add anything you might need to the record. Um, I think really the only two uh, sort of little, little sticking points were the, uh, the air conditioning, and, and I had mentioned that we would be fine with the, a condition on that, and then also um, Mr. Sutton's comments about the fenestration, uh, spacing, rhythm, and stuff on the back uh, second floor addition about maybe looking at uh, or reconsidering what we do there. Um, because again, I'd like to remind the board, uh, you know, we're going to try and keep it, but if we have to tear it down, then, then we'd like to uh, be able to have the ability to work with staff to get the window configuration um, you know, worked out. Thank you. Thank you. We'll go ahead and close the public hearing and the commissioners will be allowed, to, we'll discuss the case. Any opening or any comments or concerns or discussion points? Uh, my only concern is this, this, this um, dwelling looks like it's a renovation type where you probably need at least two of everything before you're all over and done with. Uh, it looks like you've got some extensive work going on. 
Um, I note uh, that the uh, uh, part of this also is some very extensive screening uh, uh, for your uh, crawl space. I uh, do hope that uh, uh, attention to those materials and their durability are part of your plan as well too. I did not notice any access points to that, so I think that would be also an element for coordination with staff. Uh, because uh, I got to tell you one thing, I love my crawl space. <laughs> the amount of work I've put into that and, and, you know, running all sorts of utilities in my home has made all the difference in the world. Uh, so uh, the only other item uh, that I can think of uh, that might need some, uh, some issues here is, uh, in terms of paying attention, is how you're going to be uh, insulating your attic because there's an awful lot of tight and closed space up there. And that could be, a t I think that could be a really tough, tough job to do to make that actually that a habitable the, space. That, that might be the case, but that's actually out of our That's out, that's out of our order. Yeah. Uh, but that's all I have for comment right now. Okay. Anyone else? No? Mr. Taylor? Just to bring up that, that rear elevation again, um, as odd as that roof line is, it's very unique to this property. Oh, yeah. um, you know, as a contractor, I definitely see all of the functional issues, but once again, it's very unique. Uh, so I, I, I kind of would like to see some sort of detail that we might could maybe try to save. Um, that's why I like those cascade of windows that, that march in that slope down, down with the roof. Are you specifically indicating the, what, the issue with the slope yep. coming in and you have the one inch gap? Yep. Um, I don't know if that's a defining characteristic <laughs> for this home in terms of a historic significance. I would argue more along with Mr. Dobbs that, or even Mr. Sutton, that the sleeping porch as an entity is probably the thing that seems most true to me in terms of its contributing nature. Oh, yes. Um, and I love that detail. Which I, have, I have done that many times myself. But well, then that leads me into the next thing of, of comment for me is the dormers, the new dormers, now hide that from the front elevation. And I get the functional standpoint of needing the dormers for egress but so actually the the dormers were not were not just for egress they were for head height because you actually can't occupy that attic one of the things of the florida building code residential is that yes you can have a four foot six but for 50 percent of the occupiable area it has to meet that seven foot clearance otherwise you can't Greater. occupy it Correct. seven feet or higher mm -hmm. for 50 percent of the usable area that you're declaring and so without the dormer and and i concur if you looked at a shed um, solution it would require greater effort and uh, you'd actually not like it even more um, so the dormers are necessary if they want to use that space and we can certainly understand how uh, a homeowner would want as much space as possible and I commend you know looking at a solution which raises which allows them to gain that and the fact that they're pushed back you know it looks like at least 10 12 maybe 15 feet back from that front elevation um, and with the tree coverage because you can't even see when you look at our our photo essay elements you can't even see the sleeping porch from the front elevation no, with those trees. So um, if indeed the trees are remaining and they don't get limbed up too much, you know, they're going to help with that as well as the distance from the front facade, I think. And it's not like they're overly huge. It, it seems like they're really trying to minimize that with the, the size of the, dorm, the dormers. Well, the other yeah, small. Yeah. The spaces. Hardly usable, but that's not for me to speak of. Exactly. <laughs> with with the advent of tiny homes, who's, who can say? Um, 
Any other comments or concerns? Or Mr. I have Myers? none. Nope. Mr. Sutton? No Wait. further comment. Are we good, Mr. Taylor? All right, anyone like to entertain a motion? Or put one forth? Please be very clear about any any uh, recommendations. Or I move to grant a certificate of appropriateness for the drawings and documents presented at this public hearing in ARC 21-405 for the property located at 307 East Oak Avenue, with the following conditions: that the AC uh, air conditioning units are screened. Because based upon the finding of fact, the proposed project is consistent with the Tampa Heights desired guidelines for the city of Tampa for the following reasons. Um, that the orientation and site coverage, alignment um, and spacing, and trim and detail are consistent with the guidelines. I'll second the motion. All those in favor, please indicate. Oh, I'm sorry. Mr. Dobbs, do you understand the conditions put forth by the commission? Yes, and I accept them. All right, thank you. Uh, all those in favor, please state aye and raise your hand. Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Uh, motion passes. Okay, Congratulations. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, does anybody need a break? Anybody need a break? We'll just go? Okay, we're going to go. Thank Good you, evening, Ron. Commissioners. Ron Velam, staff for the Historic Preservation. The last case reflected on the agenda this evening is ARC 21-434. This is for the address of 1723 West Hills Avenue. This request is in the Hyde Park Historic District. There is a contributing structure that dates back to 1923. The underlying zoning is RS60. The request this evening is for new construction and addition to the primary structure, rehabilitation with some site improvements. On page three of your staff report, uh, there was some previous action at this site. On uh, at the end of 2020, there was an approval, which is ARC 20-233 for new construction and addition uh, to the primary structure. Uh, there was a new accessory structure attached to that request with site improvements. Moving to the uh, photo presentation, starting with the Sanborn map. Illustrating here, a uh, property in question is a corner element, is highlighted in a green box. It does face hills, it's a corner parcel. And Gumby is the secondary street. There is an alley that runs to the rear of the property. Um, beyond that to the north is Deacle. And then you have Rome to the, uh, to the east as a reference point. Uh, we use the Sanborn map as a, a point of reference to show the form and the patterns that are in the district that were prevalent in the uh, period of significance all the way to the early 40s. This map is from 1929 and it shows the primary structures and then the detached accessory structures that usually flank uh, the alleys. This is the overhead shot uh, of the current situation. Once again, we're on the corner of Hills and Gunby. There's the alley that runs to the, uh, the rear of the property. And then you see the concentration of the fabric on the rooftops of the properties in the immediate vicinity. This is looking at the uh, front facade of the structure. It's a modest uh, one-story structure that had uh, inappropriate siding over it and through prior owners and through this owner here, a lot of the uh, siding was removed to expose the natural elements underneath. Here's just looking at the front porch. You see the number of risers as you come to the front porch. You see this center uh, uh, door. You have the two uh, paired windows that are uh, symmetrical. And then to the right of the door, you have a, a period style uh, window with like side lights on it. It's a very unique detail that you pick up here. It's a little more asymmetrical, but it's very appropriate for this style house. When they picked, uh, pulled off the siding on the house, you see the ghosting of the corner boards and the siding 
does kind of canter out. So it comes down to maybe a belt course and then it kind of flares out. You see the flanking windows that are uh, very period appropriate on these craftsman style homes, flanking the fireplace. There is a triple gable that's engaged into the house currently now, and then a bump out that was original to the structure. Looking back, taking a, a stance back at the front facade. This is the neighbor uh, on that uh, west elevation off of hills. This is looking down hills, just giving you a perspective of the street shots here and here in both directions. Moving back to the uh, existing uh, contributing structure, you have the, the porch. Once again, you have this window pattern with a larger window flanking by uh, the two side windows or side lights, if you will. The siding was removed. You see the ghosting of the corner boards are here. It's a little prevalent here that kind of flares out. The existing fence here, I'd work with the, the uh, current owner here. This is more of a construction fence to keep people out as he was uh, kind of dissecting uh, the house here and, and, and picking a direction. So this is not part of what was there or what will remain after uh, completion of this project. This is moving to the rear of that same street elevation off of Gumby. This is a close up of that window pattern. You see the profile of the siding here. It's more of a novelty siding. Moving to the rear elevation. Just a little closer shot of that rear elevation showing the gable vent and how the other gables kind of die into the existing gable with this little hip visor here. And uh, to conclude, just a couple shots showing the condition of the alley. Uh, the alley will be part of this project moving forward. And that concludes the photo presentation. At this time, Mr. Keener will address the board. Good evening. Uh, my name is John Keener. I'm the architect and agent of record for Jay and Monica Heinberg for the property at 1723 West Hills Avenue. My address is 600 South Magnolia Avenue, Suite 275, Tampa, Florida. Um, wanted to thank you for your time. Um, this is a unique property. It is, um, as Ron mentioned, it's a smaller um, cottage that's in the midst of a, a sort of an interesting and diverse block. So what I hope to show you today is that um, not only are we, we are respecting the preservation and the rehabilitation of the existing home, there's a lot of unique features to this, but we're also proposing a fairly large addition. Um, we're not building to the extent possible, so we're trying to respect the existing architecture, but they're, you know, I'm not, not gonna lie to you, we are presenting a fairly large addition. We're not requiring, requesting any variances or design exceptions. Um, we're gonna show examples of previously approved designs on this site um, that reflect similar massing scale and form. We're gonna show precedent for the architectural elements that we are proposing. Um, and we're gonna hopefully uh, express some of the inherent challenges to this site and then show that we're meeting um, the massing and building form alignment, rhythm and spacing of the block and the neighborhood. Um, this is the proposed um, look, of, or do I need to hit? Thank you. This is what we're proposing. You can see, as Ron had mentioned, there's a triple gable of the existing home, and we're doing a two-story addition in the rear. Uh, for context, we had looked at the aerial shot. Our property is here, um, Deacle Avenue, uh, Watrous Avenue, Rome Avenue, and then West Hills. Gunby Avenue is straight, a straight shot down to Bayshore Boulevard. As we um, present this, we'll explain some of the rationale for some of the rooftop elements. Uh, one of the things that I'd like to express to the record is the, the red dots are neighbors that we've spoken with and received letters of um, approval from. I'd like to it, um, submit that for the record, if okay. Why don't you do it to you, Ron? While I'm doing that, I also have a structural assessment report that I'd like to submit to the record. Um, 
we are rehabilitating this house, but it should be noted that we had a, an outside structural engineering report done just to see what level of rehabilitation is needed. Unfortunately for us, this house has um, had a series of decline over the last few years um, before my client bought the home. But um, even before that, you can see through Google imagery that it's slowly declined. The house is in poor state right now. There's um, you know, termite damage, there's dry rot, there's um, sagging floors, the foundation is a mess. I, I mean, I can go on and on, and I will show you some examples of that in this presentation. Um, the other thing to note on this diagram is the blue dots represent multifamily projects. Um, this is unlike a lot of blocks in this area. We have a lot of multifamily buildings that, unfortunately, through through the years past, have um, some of them have been contributing structures that have been poorly added onto. Some of them are just newer construction that, that don't really meet the context of the neighborhood, but but they're there, and there's quite a few of them in the area. This is a closer up shot of our property as it stands today. Fairly clear lot. We have some trees on the northern corner. Uh, for purposes of us just um, kind of being on the same page, I'm calling north the right side of our house. North is up towards the, the north or to the corner, but for east, we're calling plan north to the right. Um, so fairly clear site. There used to be a pool in the rear yard. It's no longer there. Um, basically just have the one-story cottage. This is the view of the alley directly behind us. There is the alley with a parking lot um, behind the adjacent house. To the right of that is an attached garage. Um, I think that was an addition to a contributing structure in the past, but it, that is an existing attached garage off the alley. And adjacent to that is newer construction, again, with attached garages off the alley. Uh, the Sanborn map shows that at some, or in, in historically there was an accessory structure in the rear. There's no longer there. We have not been able to find any pictures in the, in the historic archives of this home. Love to know what some of these details were, but we've been using examples throughout the block in the neighborhood to, with, with just our own sort of dissection of the house to assess what the details are appropriate. This is the view from uh, Hills and Gunby. And this is the view of what we're proposing from Hills and Gunby. So the two-story addition, although it um, is much larger than what's there, sits far back on site. And I think with the perspective of, of the human scale, sets far back from the street and is not as big of a concern. Uh, for context purposes, we're looking at the entire block. We anchor um, the Rome Avenue side of the, the block with a large um, townhouse development. Uh, 60 feet high, four stories. Adjacent to that, though, is 1707 West Hills. Very large. I'm sorry, can you push that up so we can see all the imagery oh, sorry, on your sure, sheet? Sure. Thank you. And then maybe zoom out a little tight. Thank you. Yep. Sorry about that. Okay, so large um, contributing structure that has, if you can see in this image, has had some additions and work done in the past. There's a very large attached uh, one-car garage accessed from the front with a second floor. Um, this is the shot viewing that from the alley. It's important to look at all these houses both from the street side and the alley because the alley is such a prominent part of our design. Um, the neighbor next to that 1709 West Hills has also had a two-story addition to the rear. Um, you can see from the Google aerials that the roof slope we're up. getting a lot of glare off the imagery. I don't Sorry. know how we can get through that. Yeah, there we go. That That's perfect. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so you can, what I was pointing out is the roof line that you can kind of see graduates up from the one-story piece up into a two-story roof line. Adjacent to that is a vacant lot with a proposed construction that I believe is actually approved and permitted under construction two, I believe. Adjacent to that is a one-story contributing structure. Um, doesn't uh, Well-maintained, doesn't appear to have a lot of new construction additions. Same thing with the property next to that. As we get down the road, we have a contributing structure, two-story accessory off the alley, um, two-story in the front. 
I'm not sure if this one has had work done, but um, not really relevant. Uh, 1719 has a two-story addition in the rear with sort of a rear, uh, sort of strange roof condition transition. Um, again, one-story original structure with a two-story addition in the rear also has an accessory structure in the backyard off of the alley. Our neighbor, 1721 West Hills, a uh, one-story uh, house with a um, one-story addition that has been done in the past on the rear of the house, and then trees that abut our property. Close-up of, of those same trees in the north uh, west corner and this is a view between our two properties so there's quite a bit of space between the two lots this um, this property is zoned RS 60 our setbacks are 7 foot on the side 25 feet on the front 20 foot on the rear the existing house actually sits 26 feet off of the front so we're respect we're not touching the house we're, everything we're doing is to the rear of the existing home Ron had touched on this, so I'm not going to go in too much detail, but we have exposed um, the house to the, the core of what, what's left. There's a lot of bad um, examples of, of siding and additions on the rear. There's a lot of decay, but there are some cool details that this house had. There's this flare at the bottom. We have a six inch exposure shiplap siding um, with corner boards, so it's sort of a unique detail. And, as we show the rest of our presentation, um, we're taking the details that are in this house and we're, in, we're bringing those into the new portion that we're adding on to, to bring some consistency to it and also to highlight some of the few details. This house is a very simple house, so we're trying to just make sure that, that we can bring some detail to this and some interest. Again, some examples of decay and some poor, poor additions and, and um, just uh, examples of, of bad conditions in this house. Ron had mentioned the front windows. One of the issues we, we may have if we, and we're presenting to remove these windows and um, replace them, but we have a strange condition with the, the railing in the front and how it terminates into that window. Um, not something that, that is critical to our design. We will certainly be open to negotiation or, or discussion on that point, but I, I don't really like this condition, especially as we're rehabilitating and probably reconstructing a good portion of the porch. I think that's going to pose an issue with code requirements. Um, some other examples of, you know, there's, at some point somebody introduced some glass balk to this house. That's going to be removed. Um, just kind of conditions that are present. The front columns are um, not historically accurate. I'll show you in our presentation some examples of what we believe they look like. Uh, again, just more, more existing conditions. Um, getting to our site plan uh, or our floor plan. This is existing floor plan. Um, we're keeping the front three uh, gable elements that we spoke of um, and removing the back portion of this house. The front of this is um, 952 square feet, including the porch. We're removing 643 square feet, so we're actually rehabilitating, preserving 68% of the existing structure. This is a diagram to show what that looks like as far, far as an aerial percentage. We've got the, the front porch and then the two other dormers, or I'm sorry, gable ends, and this red line represents approximately where we're proposing to dissect the house and remove the rear portion. We're also preserving this side gable that adds some architectural interest to the Gunby elevation. Existing conditions, the flare detail, it's hard to see in this um, image, but it's basically a two by four that is scabbed onto the side of the bottom um, rim joist. And there really is no um, screening to the to the uh, crawl space on this house. That skirt detail goes about six inches from the grade all around the house. So there's no way to, or we haven't seen evidence of any way to keep critters and things from coming into that house. Through our presentation, we'll show you our resolution to that detail. But this is the existing conditions that are present. We have a 16 by 16 brick pier for the most part. If you review the structural report, it's very inconsistent. The underside, the foundation of this house is a mess. I've never seen such a hodgepodge of different elements, but 
the root of this house was 16 by 16 brick piers, approximately eight, eight feet on center, if, <laughs> if there is a standard. Two by four walls. We have a six inch, six inch exposure shiplap that's a directly applied to the two by four walls. We have an eight foot 10 ceiling and two by four um, rafters with a two foot eight roof overhang with the two by four exposed rafter tails. There is a one by um, beadboard soffit, which I'll show you examples of that, that, that is consistent through the house and consistent with the time period. Uh, this is through that side gable detail. So there is existing venting condition, which is a one by one cross weave. And we'll show you examples of that too. So um, as we get into the rehabilitation, I'll show you examples of how we're going to take this detail, section detail, and apply that to the new conditions. Other examples, um, when we started this project, we've looked at many different alterations of how we can configure this site. My first meeting with staff had this plan. And what, I, what I'm really showing is that we were originally planning to try and do a two-car garage off the rear. Talking to staff, um, talking to my client, we realized that's probably not the most sensitive approach. So we, we started looking for other options. We also wanted to take advantage of the Gunby Avenue um, site. You, you actually can see Bay Shore in the water from this property. Um, so originally we were proposing to put a tower element on this house. We've um, pulled back from that, brought down the scale, and um, have taken that element off. Although we will present our widow's walk detail, which um, I'll show you more as we get through. Looking at the site, we have um, a grand oak in the front. You can see the, the radius here. We were trying to find alternative ways to park. The city of Tampa requires two parking spaces off the street. This house, um, we're not allowed to park in front of the main massing. Um, so it leaves this option open. We can approach the garage from the front or from the alley. Um, this was a potential option with a one car garage from the alley left, um, really didn't leave us enough room to meet my program requirements from my clients. So that wasn't really a viable option for us. This diagram shows other ways that we could approach the uh, one car garage from the front, similar to our discuss or your discussions earlier with another case, we end up with this weird jogged driveway condition, which as a designer, I don't like, um, but knowing the transportation guidelines and natural resources requirements, this is what a, a solution that would be required if we were to enter from the front. Another solution showing a two car garage doesn't leave us any room to really provide an addition. Here's a potential solution with a two car garage off the alley. Not a bad solution, but what it doesn't do is give us any room for a yard for um, his daughter and uh, dog to run. Yard was a big part of this. Um, we're trying to maximize this site from front to back, have some space for outdoor entertainment. Um, and this really ate up all of the rear yards, so that wasn't appealing to us. Another solution, bringing that garage closer to Gunby. Again, takes up a lot of rear yard, doesn't really give us a lot left over. We're looking at other alternative methods. This was one that until recently we were um, going with where we did have a one car parking space in the front and then the secondary space off a of garage on the rear. Very similar to what we're proposing today. When we actually got the, the final survey for this property, we had a little more depth to our site. So we were able to bring both parking spaces to the rear of the property and eliminate the need for a long driveway and a parking space in the front. This is our site plan we're proposing. Um, again, important things to note, preserving the front of the house. This shaded portion represents the area that's going to be removed. And then the darker portion is the area of the addition. Um, front setback is 25 feet. Our building's 26 feet. We're doing uh, uh, seven feet on the south elevation. We're about seven foot two on the north elevation, and we are 20 foot four on the, the rear elevation, the west elevation. This is our floor plan, um, showing the proposed addition. Shaded portion is existing to remain. This is what we're adding on with a porch in the rear. Uh, we are proposing an attached garage off of the alley um, with one parking space in the garage, 
one parking space partially covered at, into the driveway. The second floor addition, you can see the, the three gable ends that we're preserving, and then the second floor um, sets back and stacks on our new addition. The roof plan showing a trellis element that we're proposing on the side as part of the original structure, um, but then the roof plan of the new addition with the widow's walk element. This is a, um, a roof hatch similar to a commercial construction where it's not visible from the street. It's going to be accessed more from an internal ladder. So it's, um, it's a way to get up to the roof for um, minor events to see the water. Um, so it's not, not really an imposing roof element, but it is something that my client had challenged me to provide. The front elevation. Um, is, and this is the challenge. This is why we create the 3D modeling because at a 2D flat elevation, I can see the, the issues with scaling and massing. Existing front elevation to a one-story cottage, it's, it's very small. Um, when you add the two-story mass in the rear, it, it does look imposing, but I think it's important to note that that mass is 55 um, feet off of the street. I'm sorry, off the sidewalk, excuse me. Um, this shows our addition, and this below it is a previously approved addition to this site. As Ron had mentioned earlier, um, the end of 2020, somebody had come before the board and had this plan approved. Um, it has a two-car detached uh, garage um, in the rear. Uh, problem being is that my client did not need that second, the two-story accessory structure. He needed the square footage as part of the main house and not as an accessory dwelling. The house he's in now has a detached accessory um, structure. It's not functional for their lifestyle, so he needed, he needed that square footage closer to the house. We weren't able to marry the square footage needed for the house and then have a detached accessory structure. Purpose of me showing those other site plans. What I was getting at is the two-story massing being so far off the sidewalk. I think this is a good example of that that street elevation from a human scale. It really sets back, I think, by adding this trellis, it helps buffer some of those massing elements. It also gives us a garden feature that addresses the sidewalk and the street along hills. Here's our south side elevation. That would be the Gunby side um, existing. This line indicates the portion we're removing and obviously that how that lines up with the two-story massing. We created the master bedrooms in the rear we wanted that to mimic a sleeping port, so we're introducing casement windows. The majority of the windows in the home are double hung, um, so we are introducing a mix of fixed casement and double hung windows. The, um, again, the previously approved design had a similar type of addition with the two-story accessory structure. I actually think the massing is more um, prominent than what we're proposing. Here's our 3D model of that south side elevation. The west alley side or the rear um, existing and proposed. Here's what was previously approved against what our proposal is, uh, what we are proposing. And again, a 3D model showing that rear elevation. The north side facing the neighbor. Um, we, we have a man door with a small shed roof element with wood brackets supporting. We're showing the um, pergola element um, off of the existing house. Uh, one of staff's comments was to bring this, the scale of that down and bringing, bring it back behind the fireplace and we had amended our drawings to reflect those comments. This is the similar, the same elevation with the previous approved design. I think it's important to understand that um, I think the scale and massing of what has been approved in the past is, I don't, in my opinion, isn't much different than what we're showing. Again, 3D always helps me understand that. Looking at building sections, I know these are small, small and hard to see, so we've uh, blown up other details and, and hopefully that'll help clarify. I'm gonna run through these quickly showing cut through the existing house in the proposed addition. Here's an example cut through the existing front of the house through the two-story addition. Here's a perspective shot of our proposed design from the Gunby side of elevation. We're proposing a six-foot fence. 
It's sort of an axon shot showing how the massings relate to each other. You can also see, again, partial model of the massing of the um, multifamily project in, off of the alley. I think it's helpful to see the relationship of the pergola, the roof elements, and the addition. The proposed fence is just going to be a wood six foot tall fence, painted most likely white. It's just going to be one by four vertical slats with a two by six top cap. Our widow's walk um, detail is basically um, a wood frame with these cross members. We're going to introduce a very thin stainless steel cable rail. Um, the idea is we want the cross members to be prominent, this, the cable rail to go away, but it, we also need to meet the code criteria for the four inch spacing. Um, this is a section detail of that element. These are examples. Here's a precedent in the neighborhood along Richardson of a, a widow's walk on an existing house. Um, our neighbor across the street on Gunby actually has an existing um, historical element on the roof that takes advantage of that water view. Um, that was the driver for our first design, having a tower element. Um, we were talked off the ledge on that and brought it down a bit, and now we're just proposing the widow's walk to really maximize this view down Gunby. Once we're at that higher elevation, we'll be able to see over this canopy and actually see the water fairly well. Our front columns, um, they're, not, uh, they're not in their histor historic form right now. We have to remove them and reconstruct them. Looking at the neighbor's house, they have three columns on the corners. That's what we're proposing. Um, and we're gonna preserve and try and rehabilitate these um, sort of details at, at the top of the column. The rear garage is off the alley. I know an attached garage does not meet the, the standards of Hyde Park guidelines. I think in this case, we've, we really were limited on, on how much space we had left with the amount of the site that we need to preserve. This was the solution that we came up with. One of the things we're trying to do to mitigate the, the view of the garage is to push that garage door back from the face of the, the rear elevation. The garage door sits about 11 and a half feet off of this, this face. So um, you'll have a, a parking space and then the garage door for the secondary parking space. Uh, we're also introducing this pergola element just for some architectural detail in the rear. Here's a section cut through that area. Inside that exterior portion of the parking, we'll have a screened area for trash and recycling, and then a gate that gets us to the rear yard. Um, again, showing that parking condition. So we're about 11 and a half feet, and then the front garage door, and then we have 20 foot four to the alley. That's showing the um, perspective of what we'll see from the corner of the alley in Gunby. Details of our pergola we're proposing in the front of the house. Um, here's an example in Hyde Park of another similar type of element. Our roofing, we're proposing a one inch um, standing seam metal roof, uh, probably going to be Galvalume. We'll work with staff on that. The existing typical roof overhang, as I mentioned earlier, is a two foot eight roof overhang, two by four rafter tails, one by four beadboard wood um, soffit. We are proposing the metal roof and we're also proposing a half round metal gutter with a four inch round downspout. Here's a picture of the existing um, rafter condition, soffit condition. Basically, we're gonna replicate that and rehabilitate what's there. Our gable end is a little different. Rather than 32 inches, we have a two foot um, overhang. We have a two by six barge rafter versus two by four rafter tails. You can see the uh, siding also goes right up to the underside of the, the beadboard. There is no extra trim details on those gables. Here's our uh, venting detail. Existing venting is just gonna be replicated. Um, as we're most likely going to have to rebuild a good portion of this and we're also introducing spray foam to this house so we will be closing off those venting details but we'll try and make them or we're going to make sure that they they stay authentic from the street side i mentioned earlier about the skirting detail um, this is existing condition of of how that detail works as we are rebuilding and rehabilitating this 
we are going to propose a slightly uh, a slight alteration to that to really in enclose that um, that uh, crawl space. What we're going to do is introduce a stem wall around the perimeter between the existing piers. Um, it won't be seen from the street. That's going to step back about one inch from the face of the existing brick piers. And as I mentioned, we only have about six inches from the grade to the bottom side of that skirting. So um, it's really a matter of helping us uh, level out the perimeter of this house and also to close off that crawl space from the, the elements and the critters. Um, we're going to spray foam the underside of the flooring, spray foam the walls. We need a closed condition and a closed um, crawl space for that to be effective. Uh, we also are going to introduce, well, the siding's in bad, tape, in bad shape. Um, other projects I've done in Hyde Park in the past uh, um, have required us to remove that siding and replace it. That's what we're going to uh, propose in a rehabilitation plan. Running out of time, so I'm going to go quick. Uh, windows and doors, uh, four and a half inch um, trim around the doors. We're going to mimic that. Uh, we're using a aluminum clad wood window by Sierra Pacific is what we're proposing for the new structure. And we'd also like to replace the existing house windows with these. None of them are in a, a, a place where they can be pre uh, preserved. Uh, the rear door, we're proposing an aluminum bifold door. Six inch exposure siding, all wood siding. We're gonna rehabilitate what we can. I don't think a lot of it's gonna be preservable, but we are gonna take everything that is salvageable and replace it onto the house. Our ceiling, porch ceilings are one by four beadboard stained. Here's other examples of large corner additions that I've done in Hyde Park. Here's a large uh, project just down the road from us. And again, that's our perspective from the street. Um, I appreciate your time. I know I'm getting close to the end of my, um, my time here, but I think it's important to note that um, the fact that the existing house is about 60%, I think I said 68% of preservation of the existing house really limits us to about 50% of the site of what we have left to work with. Um, I don't think in any other location this house would be preserved, but I think we're going to put a good effort into making this house last for another 100 years. It's been here since 1919. Uh, we'd like it to go another 100 years, so we're going to put a lot of time and effort into making sure the, the moves we make keep this house, um, or help preserve what's there and make it better and last. Thank you. Thank you. We'll move on to the staff report now. Good evening, Commissioners. Ron Vila, staff with Historic Preservation. On page four of my staff report, um, it touches upon the staff's finding this presentation was very complete with a lot of challenges this evening, uh, not for the lack of meeting with staff. Uh, we're here today. Staff's finding that this application is inconsistent with the Hyde Park design guidelines. If you refer to um, the application of standards for the Hyde Park design guidelines on page three of your staff report, there's three um, of the guidelines that, that kind of jump out to us. The first one is the scale, the height, and the width. It touches upon the proportions of the size of the new building compared to others on that block. The next item is the massing and building form. The relationship of the building massing and form. I think the form here is what's important to the other buildings in the district. And then when you go to uh, alignment, rhythm, and spacing, it addresses the effects of the new building will have on the existing patterns along the block. So in the items that I pulled from the Hyde Park design guidelines, it touches upon the form and the patterns that were violated here with the engagement of the accessory structure into the structure. I, uh, I started out with the um, photo presentation showing the patterns that were consistent historically in 1929, and we could use that as a reference if we need to. I could go back to that. The zoning classification for this parcel is R60. Um, some of the other illustrations that he showed this evening, they had multi-family zoning classification, so larger structures and different setbacks accompany those, um, those zoning classifications. And then on page four of the staff report, I uh, pull some uh, excerpt out of the uh, Secretary of Interior standards. On page 91 of the standards, 
It addresses locating an attached exterior addition at the rear or inconspicuous side of the historic building and limiting its size and scale in relationship to that historic building. So I think those are the first items that need to be addressed are the massing and the scale and the, and the alignment of the building. If the conversation goes further than that, uh, on the staff report on page four, I talk about other uh, items that need to be addressed as the hardscape and, and the landscaping. The landscaping should all be natural. The hardscape, I'm sure he could address with some, uh, some uh, additional items. He did reduce the pergola. At one time, the pergola was a parking spot that came off the primary street, which is Hills. Uh, it no longer function in that capacity. It's just a little side outdoor space. He reduced the size of the pergola to be behind the, the fireplace. The fireplace is a character defining feature that we felt that should take precedent over uh, uh, introduction of a, of a new architectural element. He did address the location and the style and the height of the fence through his presentation this evening. Uh, probably a little more discussion on the period structure that's there to provide you know, a demo plan or the rehabilitation plan. He went through his presentation fairly quickly. There was a lot of information that he touched upon in a very thorough uh, presentation, but you know, the jewel here is, is the old lady that's there, so a little more discussion on the uh, historic structure. There was a uh, front door package that was a little foreign to this craftsman style cottage. Now he introduced something that's more period appropriate. A couple of um, uh, final items that I have is the roof material. For single family structures, what we find through our research, period appropriate uh, metal roofs would be a 5V crimp. He uh, submitted tonight a uh, a low, a low standing seam roof that is usually uh, confined to commercial buildings. And then he did address all the uh, windows to be replaced in the period structure and to be introduced in the new structure to be cladded. We have been very consistent on the window uh, reinstallation on period homes to be all wood windows. And then on the addition, the introduction of a cladded window may be an appropriate solution. So having said that, that completes um, staff's finding on um, this request, and I'll be here to answer any questions. Thank you. Sorry. Um, we'll open this up now to public comment. If, if there's anybody here who would like to speak for or against the project, please do come up. Okay, seeing none, we'll go ahead and close the public comment and the commissioners will begin asking questions and we'll start with Commissioner Taylor. Just to be different. All right, uh, you supplied a uh, structural report. And yes, whether you do the addition or not, in order to renovate this home, uh, wouldn't you have to take a look at that structural report and yeah, the, the repair the you know the necessary repairs for the home. Would we do that, or, or would anyone. some anyone? Yeah, the, the the state of the house. I mean, any other neighborhood, it would be torn down. There, it's most by most people's conditions. I think it's beyond the point of repair. My client is going to rehabilitate that, assuming we move forward, obviously. But um, you know, I think floor joists are salvageable. Probably some of the ceiling rafters. Uh, or the roof rafters, um, a lot of it's going to be reconstructed probably in pieces from the inside out. I think um, other properties I've worked on in the area that are similar age, by the time we get down to the realities of construction or rebuilding, um, to meet Florida Building Code, we generally have to reframe all of the window and door openings. Um, we also should introduce plywood, a vapor barrier, and then reintroduce the siding on the outside of that. This house right now just has two by four studs with the siding on the outside. Not to say that can't be um, buttoned up and cleaned up, but the condition of the siding is so bad that, I mean, I can stick my pen through most areas of the house. In addition to that, the, the report shows that um, a good deal of the nails have rusted through, so even the, what's holding the siding on is probably not good enough for today's standards. Um, therefore, 
I propose that we um, are going to remove the siding, um, preserve as much as we can, put the plywood vapor barrier, obviously scab on any new wood where we need to, and then reapply the siding and introduce new siding to match the historic details that are there. Um, we'd also like to introduce insulation. In this case, we're pr proposing isonine insulation to really just kind of tie the new and the old and button this up. We don't want to have moisture or humidity issues in this house. Okay. I don't want to assume, but I, until I'll ask the question, I, you will be tearing out the interior this there as well. So you'll be able to access from both sides. Is, yeah, yeah. I, what I found most of the time, what we try to do to be sensitive is we, we wouldn't just tear off the entire outside of this house. I think we would tear off the interior walls. There, it's all just drywall. Very, it's really nothing salvageable in there. Um, so we would remove the inside, assess the situation, and then work with staff, work with um, the, uh, inspectors to make sure we come up with a plan of rehabilitation um, that is appropriate for what ex conditions are present. Um, based upon the structural report um, and by what I'm assuming is gonna, we're going to find, I think there's going to be a lot of new wood that needs to be applied to what's existing. I know all the existing openings are going to need to be reframed to meet Florida Building Code and even to have something that we can even attach a window to. So um, our hope is to um, be sensitive. I mean, I don't want to go in there and just tear down this house and rebuild it. The idea is to preserve as much of what we have and, and rehabilitate it and then introduce sensitive details to match what was what was there previously. Which leads me into the windows. I obviously perused the report very quickly. Um, I did not remember, or I do not remember seeing anything in that report regarding the windows in particular. Mm. Uh, it, it does mention them. Um, they're, they're all, at the very least, um, need reglazed for sure. Um, most of them are in pretty poor condition. The, the wood's rotten. There's termite damage. So I, I really don't think any of them are salvageable. Um, and therefore, and especially since we're going to have to replace the, the framing and all around the window openings, um, I think at that point, even if, if there was anything left, I think in the removal process, it might get damaged and destroyed. So are they currently single pane windows? Yes, sir. Wood? Some of them. Some of them are aluminum. Um, some of them are glass block. I mean, it's, it's a well, mixture. Well, I'm, I'm asking more in relation to yeah, the, the, the original are wood ones. single pane windows. Yes, sir. Uh, so has there been any thought process to rebuilding those? Um, there's been thought to it. Um, I don't think it's financially feasible for the condition of them. We would certainly entertain that if, um, if, if one, when we get to the point of um, when we have a contractor involved and they can help us determine if any of them are salvageable, we would certainly do that. What is your front porch height? The finished floor. The height from, from grade to the floor? It's just around 30 inches. It's about 32 inches from, from the sidewalk to the front porch. I'm asking the question because you referred to that railing, which does not look original to me. Um, but it looks like by grading potentially the, the, the actual yeah, soil around the front porch, you may be able to eliminate that problem. The, um, the grade on our site actually slopes from, well, from the north side to Gundy. So there's, there's a pretty good drop off. I mean, it's probably a foot from side to side on the property. So um, we may be able to address that with fill, I'd say, on the north side. But as we fall off towards Gunby, I think it creates a bigger problem. Um, so I think we're going to need to maintain. We may be able to mitigate that, that requirement for less than 36 inches of a guardrail. Um, right now, we're above that. So we, we would need to raise that, that up. Obviously, um, I don't think a lot of that front porch, or at least what's remaining, is original. Um, I think the, the porch was there, obviously, and the intent was there, but most of it has been rebuilt at some point. The front columns are completely gone. <laughs> I've opened that, that up. So I think what we're trying to do, and I've looked for pictures, we're trying to use examples from the neighborhood and other details that we can reintroduce and make that detail more per, uh, period appropriate. Okay. The metal roof was mentioned. So the next question 
would you entertain a 5B crimp type yeah, style roof rather we would. than the standing seam? We would. Um, our preference is standing seam for the longevity. Uh, the 5B crimp obviously introduces um, the potential for more water damage, but to, to be, that would not be a sticking point. We would certainly um, approve that as a condition. On your screening, in order to enclose the uh, crawl space, mm. what are you proposing? I realize there's only a very small amount you can see, but you will still see it. What are you proposing as a finish on the CMU block? I was going to put a, a stucco and paint. Um, you won't, like I said, you won't really see it, especially with landscaping. Um, you know, if it is visible, we don't want it to be unattractive. So um, the hope was that we would um, stucco that, that face of that block and, and paint it. All right, you've mentioned you're gonna to try to salvage as much siding as you can. Who knows what that amount is? What is the new siding going to be? It's gonna be the same. It's a, a wood siding. Um, I have a detail in here I've pre presented. I can find it. Let's, uh, to answer your question, it's just going to match what's there. It's a six-inch exposure uh, lap siding with a, a bevel. But it is a wood siding. I may have been looking at the report when you whenever that. Well, I mean, I'll, I'll show you a picture of the existing um, siding. So we're it's, it's not an atypical siding. We're going to match what's there. It's, um, okay. And it... I think what's there is pine. Uh, we would probably introduce a cypress or a cedar versus using pine. And do you have any details on the trellis? Uh, yeah, I presented the detail. Um, So in the 3D, you can see we've got a four by eight um, uh, top member, uh, two by four, um, two by four uh, <laughs> uh, trellis members um, that are running across that. These details are based upon those um, front porch details, just the very simple um, scalloped edge. So we're just kind of keep the simple details that we're pulling out of the house. Um, we're going to have an 8x8 eight eight column with a top cap and a little bottom trim piece. A very simple detail, not, not overstated, but we just wanted to, um, we thought it helped mitigate the, the scale when looking at it from the street. And it just introduces an element to the front of the home. And last question is, has there been an option looked at without the widow's wall? Yes. Um, we... My client has, from day one, wanted to have a rooftop element that he could see the water. So we considered all elements. Um, the issue being is that that was a big part of my program. So what we've tried to do is downplay that as much as possible, make it a feature that we can use, but it's not overwhelming. It can't be seen from the, from the pedestrian level for the most part. When you look at the front elevation, it's, it's visible, but it's not um, overwhelming. So we tried to be sensitive to both my client's needs as well as the, the relationship to the street and the neighbors. That's all I have for now. Thank you, Commissioner Tukubis. Okay, let's talk about the garage. <laughs> it's a, I thought it was two cars, just one car? It's just a one car garage. Um, that sets off of the rear elevation. So I find the 3D that reinforces that. Essentially the, the rear face of the house and then 11 and a half feet back is the face of the garage door. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and what's above the garage? That's living space? 
Yes, ma'am. It's a bedroom. Okay. okay. That's more of a true rear elevation shot without any landscaping or anything. Mm -hmm. We also tried to set back the sort of connection piece to mimic um, a detached structure. I, I, mean, I know it's not a detached structure, but we were trying to play with in and out to give it a variety and, um, and keep some of the similar scaling and mass of the original house as far as the roof forms. Okay. Um, I know you presented all kinds of other options that you looked at with the detached um, garage. Um, have you considered just not having a garage and maybe having some sort of just covered parking? Um, we have um, similar. Anytime you have covered parking, you, similar, you have to have the um, uh, separation from the main house. Mm -hmm. We've um, considered no garage at all. Um, Honestly, it, it introduce, it, it's challenging on the site. We have to then provide parking in the front of the house, which I showed in some of those diagrams, requires a very long driveway. Um, and then we have really only the ability to park one car with the amount of room that we have. Mm -hmm. um, so then the other car would have to go somewhere off of the alley or the rear, um, in which case uh, really limits our other options of developing the site. Um, again, we only have the back 49% of the lot to work with. The front 51% is all a part of the rehabilitation of the, the, the house. So we're limited with, um, and I, I'll admit, a very aggressive program, but, um, but also limited site to work with. Okay, thank you. And Julia, I'll Commissioner Myers, sorry, excuse me. <clears throat> um. Has the uh, structural report been submitted to staff? Um, I assume that it was at some point. I don't believe so. We had done that uh, beginning of last year. Uh, can I, Ron, can you answer that? There is not um, the elaborate report that was uh, circulated this evening, but I did see some uh, structural analysis of the building. Th their prior owners, and, and when this first went on the market probably two, three years ago, you know, the first request that came in was demolition of the contributing structure. So, you know, we, we never got a real positive uh, request for that that made it to the board. The prior owner did look at, you know, renovating as the current owner is doing now with rehabilitation and then doing an addition. So um, there, there has been multiple structural analysis presented to us. I have not had a chance to look at the complete package that was submitted tonight. All right, thank you. Any other questions? No, no, questions? Uh, no I have no further questions. Commissioner Taylor, you I've got a question up. for Gloria. Can I give my, I should say opinion, but I can't say anything in regards to the social report based on my experience. Um, Commissioner Taylor, you can't provide testimony regarding this application. I just ask questions, which is right. what I did. Commissioner Sutton. I have no question on this matter right now. Commissioner Boyd. I don't have any questions. Um, I just wanted to talk about we talked about the garage already. Um, the entry door and the the window with the side lights at the front. I believe you stated that those would be outright removed and replaced with something different. And it looks like in the elevations you've got um, a craftsman style door with side lights, and then you're replicating the double light, the double window at the left of the doors on the right. Let me, let me locate my front elevation so we can look at that. In the meantime, this may help. The, we were gonna introduce two double hung windows right. and then the door with side lights is differing from what's there. And the, the pair of windows on the right, they are to match this, the size of the 
pair on the left. Is that the intent or they're smaller? That's the intent, yes. Okay. Um, and the, the reason for replacing those outright with something different is? I, I, let, me, let me pull up that picture of the existing condition. Um, I don't love the way that the, the front porch railing engages the front of the, those windows. Right. Um, and so I'm also concerned when we get into the realities of, of meeting building code that the, the porch sits up a little higher than the 30 inches. Now we might be able to mitigate that. There may be a requirement where we need to raise that railing to a 36 inch height. If that happens, the condition that's present there will not work. Um, now, as a condition, if, if we can make it work and it's a non-issue and, and the board would rather us keep that window, we will do, we will do so. Um, I just think it's, I, it doesn't seem like a period appropriate detail. <laughs> Similar to the last case we looked at, there's every now and then you get something that's just Well, I, I would agree with that. I, I would argue that maybe this house didn't even have it because codes are ever changing, right? And right. so that may not even have been the appropriate thing for this house at that time anyway. Um, but, and I do want to commend you and your client for trying to rehabilitate and save this house. Because I know how easy it is for many to just come forward and say, it's, uh, it's a goner, let's just take it away. Um, and anything we can do to save our fabric is important to our communities, especially here in Hyde Park. I mean, it has the history, right? Um, and, but anything that we can do to save as much of the elements as we can, I think it is important. The story here of that front facade, and yeah, it's an odd condition, I myself, find the header condition of concern in terms of water runoff as a water intrusion point. And you've mentioned that several times as you've run around the building. Um, but I would ask, you know, could, could you, you know, as you move forward, reconsider the entirety of that and if there's another way of approaching that. I know we've talked about that a little bit about the grading and certainly, you know, if you have that differential across from the north to the south, certainly understand it, but I think there might be opportunities to just address that differently and, and, and save what you can of the original, even if you have to um, replace pieces here and there. But when we look at it from the street, it would be lovely to see the characteristic of what you bought, you know, what your owners bought, rather than, because um, you might as well just rebuild the whole thing, you know. So. Right. I do, I don't, I don't disagree with that. And, and the reason I, I wonder that it might be original is only because the similar, not exactly that it engages the window that way, but the, the property to the north of us has a similar type of porch with a low railing mm -hmm. and siding up to the bottom of that. It seems to repeat itself along the block. So led me to believe that maybe this condition was just a, a wonky detail that was resolved. Sure. In 1919. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Um. Um, is it also possible that um, when you open up that wall on the inside that you'll find that that uh, large window with the two side lights was perhaps not original? It very well could be. I, I, it's hard to say on this house because as you go around, there's so many pieces that even as you look at the siding, like in one aspect, I think it looks great, but then you see how it turns the corner and it doesn't align with the other siding. And sometimes I, I can't figure out which side's original. Um, it's, it's really hard to see, but yeah, we, that, that could be a potential issue. So don't we have a similar window on the south elevation? We do, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, we do. Again, perhaps it was an added it changed. All right. Um, I do not have another question at this time. Does anyone else have a question for the applicant? No. So you have uh, five minutes now for rebuttal. If, if you want, you can add anything else into the record. Um, well, I appreciate your time and the dialogue. Um, I don't have much to add outside of um, what we discussed with the front windows and, um, you know, certainly be a condition that we'd, we'd accept. Um, Roofing going to a 5e crimp would be an acceptable solution to us um, and Obviously as, as we dissect this house further. I mean we've already done quite a bit of um, removal of poor choices um, We're going to continue to discover things and 
the good part about these process these projects is you know we're involved in that process so as pieces are coming apart we're trying to help figure out how to put them back together in the most appropriate form and also make this house work I mean that's the issues that I have on houses that aren't put back together in the right fashion is comes down to mold and mildew and humidity issues and if we don't do this right we will introduce a lot of problems so it's important that as we dissect this and rehabilitate it that we do do it right and we make sure that it it's going to last because we do want it to last they're going to invest a lot they've already invested a lot to this property and they're going to invest a lot of money um, and i think that it makes sense to to allow us to take the steps necessary to make sure that this house does stay in its present form thank you, thank you. Uh, we'll go ahead and close the public hearing and commissioners will discuss the case would anyone okay. like to open up a discussion point or the massing is to me off very off um, as much as I appreciate what we're trying to accomplish with the property a lot of the points that have been given to save the house those renovations are going to have to be done anyway um, whether there's an addition that's twice as big as the original house or not so for me that's a sticking point um, the front door and the removal of that what I tend to believe is an original window is also another sticking point mm -hmm. I'd also like to see the original windows rebuilt um, that could be really really tough but could they be replaced with wood windows? you're better off replicating them either yeah. or yeah, I've done both mm -hmm. and, you know we've all seen both um, so I, I think that that's there, there's several options there mm -hmm. but much better than just an aluminum clad window oh, in the great. original structure mm -hmm. uh, but again I mean I can we can talk about design criteria and types all day long but the massing is still there regardless you know I wonder about the um, the original structure and, and and how bad off it actually is <coughs> well again with you know we really didn't have an opportunity to look at the report in a in a, in advance. In a very mindful way and even though many of us are educated in the building arts um, it would be it would have been great to have had that earlier but um, based on my brief review of it it didn't seem out of the ordinary and, and inconsistent with other reports that we've seen, seen on past. on structures for this age okay. Not at all. that have been saved so Not at all. But yeah. even though it's in the condition that it is, you know, to, you know, to take off a little, a little more than a third of the original building fabric to, to create a brand new addition, kind of like flies in the, uh, uh, in the face of, of, of uh, the basic mandate that if you make an addition to an existing structure uh, uh, that's protected, if that addition were to be removed, how much of that existing fabric is left behind? We've taken away, you know, the proposal is taking away at least a third of the original structure. Agreed. I, I almost feel like there needs to be more study of, of the report and a, a true demolition and rehabilitation plan presented to staff and the board for I believe reconsideration so. of when we're just talking about the contributing structure. Um, so that we truly get a good, good, good sense of what really is going on, what's feasible, and we understand the financial implications of that. But there is also a mandate within the guidelines that, and the Secretary of Interior's standards, that as much as possible is saved with the original contributing elements as possible. And a third, that, that's quite a lot. It is quite a lot. So. It is quite a lot, and, and this is a very aggressive program being presented here tonight. Although we don't have a, we've not had an opportunity to take a look at 
what the interiors of these areas are going to be really looking or functioning like. Uh, but you know that's that's where we get this mass from, and okay. it's it's the kind of a program that isn't originally accommodated by, you know, this diminutive original structure. Agreed, and we've had those conversations before about even our historic structures accommodating the way that we live today. We, we mm -hmm. all understand those constraints, but we also know um, that certain styles of homes and smaller bungalows, bungalows like this consistently give heartache to owners and builders mm -hmm. and, and I designers. The contrary of that third that they're taking off, that is the hodgepodge added on not necessarily the original part. That's where the, the block. Some of it is. You know, it looks like it was is. an enclosed, beat up porch. It just lo doesn't look like it matches at all. It, I mean, it makes sense where they're cutting it off. Yes, it is a third, but it does make sense. I think an additional sort of massing component is that we do get to view this structure from a further distance than just the the pedestrian walk or the drive like that view to Bayshore is huge for the the homeowner and I understand that 100% but that means we also get the view of this house all the way from Bayshore absolutely and and that was a point that was made during the presentation um, and seeing that view down Bayshore you know you absolutely understand when you whip around and look back towards the house you see that and those vantage points, those views right from the sidewalk just don't help because you know in reality you're going to see more of it as you step further back. We get a better budget. view of the massing of the, of the addition than we would on a typical addition that we see Agreed. come through. Agreed. Yeah, from that perspective, you're going to see the, the addition. Two you're actually not even going to see the original house. No, you won't. Mm -hmm. No, you will not. Yeah, and we haven't even talked about the garage, <laughs> right? Um, that which is a huge part of the massing. Um, so, yeah, the garage. A lot of points were made about um, multifamily being present, especially within the the immediate block. Um, and I and I get why those were brought up because of massing, but. They're also a different typology yeah, and, and use. And, yeah. So, you know, multifamily con construction versus a single family, even historically, they, they live together, but not one mimicked the other, mm -hmm. typically. And so having um, those accessory structures separated from the primary is, is basically a rule throughout all our historic districts. Right, there was not one presented that was a residential. And that's actually property. a major part of the charm of these districts right. is right. you have all types. Diversity. You have all exactly. types within within even the same block. Yep. Okay. Any other points to discuss or contemplate? I just think that uh, and I can concur, I concur with many of my other commissioners. Um, that the uh, accessory structure is a much better way to approach something uh, in this area. Um, and that uh, the massing is really the, the largest uh, problem with the presentation. And so uh, it really needs to be addressed in order to make this a, an acceptable project. Okay. Do we need to talk about the pergola at all? The pergola or the widow's walk? The pergola. Well, both. <laughs> I don't have a problem with pergola. I, I don't either. A <laughs> <laughs> oh, what? I don't have a problem with the pergola just because it's hidden by the mass of the... <laughs> 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 yeah, you don't even really know The widow's walk, I will say, uh, to me, makes the massing even more so. It's, it's also foreign to the style. It's, it's very not compatible. Foreign. Um, I think there's other options. It's very modern. To, I do think there's other mm, options yeah. to, to achieve that same concept and function to be able to see the water. Um, but I'm, the design itself just looks foreign, even to the design that we were given. 
Mm -hmm. Agreed. So, um, do we have a motion that anyone to, would like to? I, I'm I, sorry, I, yes. I, I was just going to ask, is, is there a possibility to request a continuance to address some of the concerns I've heard prior to going to a vote? Absolutely. If you want to ask for a continuance, we can certainly enter, we can put a motion forward. Maria pettis Mackle from the city attorney's office. Is that what you're asking for? Yeah, it, it, it sounds to me that we have a lot of issues to address. Um, and I'd rather, rather than go to a vote, and I, I don't feel like we have the majority support of the board, I'd rather ask for a continuance and, and address the comments you brought to us before. So if we could just have a motion um, regarding the continuance, and I believe the next available date is after October, October 6th or October 6th? October 6th. Uh, 2021 at 6 p.m. Thank you. Would that be sufficient time for your purposes? Um, October 6, I, I believe so, yes. Okay. Who would like to make the motion? I, I cannot make motions. Can, can you just give me one second? Sure, absolutely. It'll get continued Can you give us a minute, please? Yes. yes. Absolutely. Commissioners Ron Vila, staff with Historic Preservation. We have one opening in our October cy uh, cycle that is not going to work for the owner or the no, agent. We'll go ahead and do it. We'll make, we'll make other arrangements. I apologize. Yes, okay. So, so after further discussion with everybody, all the decision makers, October 6th, 2021 at 6 p.m. is our next available date. They have a very truncated deadline to, to modify their drawings and have them in. We will work with them. They've heard the discussion that's here and some of the challenging points that they need to address. For some reason, if that doesn't work for the deadline for the architect and the owner, that possibly will be traveling. We could continue that again internally, but we won't look at, at this project probably till 2022, if that's the case. But for today's purposes, I would continue tonight's public hearing to October 6, 2021 at 6 p.m. All right, thank you. I move that, oh, well, that's the other side. Uh, I move to grant a continuance in the case of ARC 21-434 for the property located at 1723 West Hills Avenue to the October 6th public hearing at 6 p.m. 2021. Thank you. I'll second the motion. All in favor, please state aye and raise your hands. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Seeing none, the motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. And I declare this hearing closed.